and I believe we're live. Are we live? I'm going to turn off the volume on this little puppy so I can watch the comments. Yes, we are live. Wow, Adrian, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. And even more so that you agreed to do this, knowing damn well that this is not going to be like a 15 minute. <laughs> You've taken your dog for a nice long walk. I have. She should be exhausted. Um, I don't have any cats in here with me. So I've got my diet Dr. Pepper. And I am in my office. So we'll see how well this goes. And I have my AW diet root beer. <laughs> Shout out to okay, Richard Saunders. Yeah, we should be good. <laughs> All right. So those of you watching on Facebook Live, hello. Good morning. It's California time for me. This is early morning for me, 10 a.m. And <laughs> I'm joined with my very good friend, Adrian Hill from Calgary um, in Canada, some people say is exists. And <laughs> she's agreed to do this with me. Now, Adrian and Janice before, who's done a couple of these videos with me, this isn't necessarily their thing, mediumship, but you kind of guys are getting to where you know a lot about it so it's nice to have another perspective especially since you're such a really good researcher and I know you went and did a lot of research and your husband even got into this too. yeah <laughs> he was like really really <laughs> is this a thing yep, yeah it's a thing. a thing so <laughs> I've watched this video multiple times and oh man so okay let me set this up for you the this is a series of videos there's four hours of videos. It was a mediumship summit organized by Grief Vampire, Hot Reader, Thomas John, back in September of 2021. And what he did is he was doing a series of these during the pandemic when everything was closed down. I think this is the fourth one, and I think it's his last one. At least he says he's putting a pause on it. And what they would do is they would sell tickets to a one day event with multiple mediums in it. So it's Thomas John and four other mediums. And what the mediums do is they come on and they give like, well, anywhere from 10 minutes to 25, 30 minutes of their answering a question, like some sort of lecture. What What is the one we're going to see today? What was the name of her lecture? Do you remember? It's um, oh, I don't remember something the name about of the children. Lecture. Yeah. And it was an hour long. Yeah, and then they come back from their little talk and they may answer some questions from people. And then the rest of the time is them giving readings. So the people who are um, paid to join or were given a ticket, they paid anywhere from $45 to $55 for this four-hour summit. And they have to remain there because otherwise they're not going to get a reading because this isn't something that they could watch later and get, hope to get a reading from because they have to be there. So these women, and I think we only have two men that we found at all that are there. And um, she's going to only read women today. Yeah. They're only women. So we'll see some of the same women come up all, all day long. And um, you <laughs> haven't watched the other videos yourself. I've watched some of them. I haven't yeah. watched all of them. Yeah. So I know who has been read before and who hasn't. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's interesting to see that at the very end, the very end, Thomas John comes in and he does 45 minutes of readings. And he reads at least one, maybe two people that were read already. And he gets exactly <laughs> the same things that the first medium found. It's really interesting. And I have videos on this. So my channel, Psychics Explains, has all the videos, they're on a playlist called uh, Mediumship Summit 2021 or 2021 Mediumship Summit. And all these mediums I've never seen before, never heard of before. <laughs> Some of their ideas are out there. And <laughs> Adrian's really excited about talking about those. So how we're going to do this is we're going to just let it go and you guys can leave comments and Facebook. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hello future people from the future <laughs> please leave me comments and please like and subscribe to the channel i'd really appreciate that leave comments i will be happy to answer all the questions that i get and comments and so on 
and we're just going to let it go and see what happens. This is my last video on the mediumship summit that I know of that I'm going to do because I've, we've analyzed every single one of them already. All right. So what I thought we would do um, is Adrian is going to um, introduce herself. Hey, Adrian, why don't you say hello? <laughs> hello, everybody. I am Adrian Hill from Canada. <laughs> And I am a gorilla skepticism on Wikipedia editor and skeptic zone podcast reporter. Yeah. I think that basically says what I am. She huh? does a lot of other things too. She's very busy. And I'm and getting her to spend this much time with me is, is a treat because <laughs> she's a busy woman. Let me tell you, a math teacher. Yes, that's right. Tutoring is yeah, yeah tutoring is crazy right now because it's year end and final exams oh you're going to enjoy this I have a lovely student who was desperately trying to find a tutor for her language arts etc and she's taking a re uh, religion course and she couldn't find a tutor so I had to tutor religion and not coming from a religious relig background. background at all that was it was actually kind of interesting I, I bet you <laughs> did really well it was fun. Really? It, she did yeah, really you're well. A good researcher, you're a good explainer. So people <laughs> will find that out today. How the how, how But I was like, yeah, you're not asking the right person, but they couldn't find anybody. Okay, I'll help. <laughs> you're a trooper. All right. So I see. Um, do you want to share this over to your chat? Um, your room, your uh, Facebook feed too, if you want. And if anybody else wants to do that, they can do that. Can you see it on Facebook? I've got it on my phone running. Okay. But I didn't want to start it because I forgot to pull it up beforehand and turn the sound off. And if I pull it up right now, the sound probably would go. Um, I can share. I don't know how to share. What are you trying to share? Who's going to share it? Well, we'll deal with it. Okay. I don't want to mess with it. It says there's three people here and that's two of them. We're two of them. <laughs> and hi Lee. <laughs> wow. Oh, Lee's here? Yeah. Oh, hello, Lee. Welcome. Welcome to the crazy world. <laughs> the crazy Long world of you today, Lee. Susan Gerbeck. You what? I said the crazy world of Susan Gerbeck. Pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> so let's start off with just um share and optimize all this beautiful sound. You guys out there who are listening, yeah, there's Lee. Um that I'm about to share some audio. Let me know, Lee, if you can hear it well. Because what do you think? Can you hear it well? Uh, no, we have to press play, I think. She always had a connection to spirit since she was young, but she did not actively develop as a medium until a few months before her father's unexpected passing. Following a life altering communication from spirit, Delivery message from spirit became her focus. Brandy has been featured guest on Hay House Radio and a contributing author to the books, When Angels Speak and The Last Breath. In addition, she has taught classes on angels and spirituality at body, mind, and soul location located in Houston, Texas. Brandy also works with the healing modality known as, and I'm going to get this wrong, um, Ar Arcturian Healing Method. Brandy is homeschooling mother to four children. She lives in Lake Jackson, Texas with her husband, children, and two dogs. And then I will put her um, email, uh, her website address in the box. And Brandy, with that, can you unmute yourself and come online? Hello, can you hear me? Everybody can you hear me? Hi, Brandy. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here today. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Tracy, and great job, Lillian. Um, for those of you don't, who don't know, Lillian has been one of my my um, main teachers, and it's it's always wonderful to see her her work. She's brilliant. Um, but thank you for having me here today. Thank you for being here. Okay, so I'm gonna unpause, and I'm gonna stop sharing that because we're gonna talk about this. So, yeah. Okay. So the volume, he says, is uh, Lisa's. The volume is a little higher for us. Okay. 
Okay. Well, as long as it's not too horrible and you can hear the people, we'll, we'll try to keep it to, I'll try to keep really monotone. <laughs> I think he said the opposite, that the volume for the, um, the video was higher. Volume is a bit higher than when you two are speaking. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell, okay. I'll tell, I'll send uh, Brandy here a message to keep it quiet. So um, <laughs> a couple of things I want to mention about Brandy before we get too far started is the person who introduced her is Tracy and Tracy is Thomas John's assistant. Tracy is a mother who has lost her son who died young and she has, she's an extreme grief and she believes everything that Thomas John says there's no way she will ever come out of this um whatever she's you want to call it that she's in she will never come out because to say or to admit that Thomas John is hot reading and that Thomas John is is um uh, manipulating people's emotions to do any of that and she's fully aware of who I am she cannot stand me and um she thinks I'm an evil atheist and she would to do that would have to admit that her son really was not communicating with her all the time that Thomas John has been saying that he's been communicating with her. She gets lots of readings and she loves all the readings she gets. Interesting enough, she doesn't mention that if she's had a reading with Brandy, which is odd because she's had a reading with everybody else and says mm -hmm. how amazing they are. But um, Tracy is beyond drink the Kool-Aid, beyond the flavor aid mm -hmm. drinker. And so mm -hmm. she's, she's gone. Um, I think it would be, it would be harmful to her if she was to mm -hmm. learn that her son isn't communicating with her. Thomas John sends her text messages with just emojis on them mm -hmm. that says, your son just told me to send these to you. And, and she fully believes that those are from Thomas John, whose phone, whose son, her son made him push the buttons on it. He'll tell her gossip about like, oh, did you hear what so-and-so said these days? And it's it's really bad. Okay. Very sad. That's sad. It's, it's really sad. Really yeah. sad. So that was Tracy. Okay. So this is Brandy Kahn. She has a master's degree in child psychology, which is fascinating. She just got her master's degree from the University of Texas, somewhere in Texas, I don't know, one of those, not like an online college or anything like that. She has a master's degree in child psychology. Just got it. I believe she's a, um, I believe she's also a winner of a um, beauty pageant, like a Miss. I'm not Texas surprised. She's a lovely, oh, lovely what lady. A smile. Oh my yeah. gosh. She just lights up the room. Lots of charisma. Yeah. And um, she is, um, you know, so she's educated. I, I mm -hmm. would love to see what her, her classroom work was like. Mm -hmm. If with the stuff she's, she's going to spout in a few minutes. <laughs> I'm sure she had some conversations with her professors that were quite interesting. Yeah. It's, I, I am <laughs> shocked. She has a degree in child psychology with some of the stuff that she's saying. It's like, well, I guess I shouldn't be shocked because that's what happens with this, right? Is they take of the foundation of truth and then twist it into something that's a little bit off or a lot off in some cases you know <laughs> during during when she's talking maybe i'll go and i'll look and see where it was that she got yeah. a degree from but i'm pretty sure it's a reputable university in texas she homeschools her four children who are now teenagers mm -hmm. she's going to talk about them quite a bit um her whole focus is children mm -hmm. she has um 2,100,000, you know, 100, 2,000 Facebook friends on her, oh. on her oh. psychic thing, which is like nothing if you're communicating with the dead. And, with, and she's really into astrology. Mm -hmm. She has a YouTube channel with 351 subscribers. That's nothing. Um, you're beating her. Yeah, by big time. <laughs> uh, she started it in November of 2022. It only has mm -hmm. 5,000 views on it. Uh, she has 12 videos. They're uh, mostly on the Zodiac and how to raise your child. They don't have mine in there. So she hasn't even gotten through the whole Zodiac. So that's pretty sad. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you want to say about her? 
Well, she's not only an astrologer and a medium, but she is, as the announcer said, an Arcturian healer. She said Arcturian, but I think it's Arcturian. I'll let you say that. Yeah. What what the heck is that? (laughs) Well, I didn't know. And I, there's nothing on Wikipedia and, but an Arcturian or an Arcturian, sorry, I was going to go back to what the other lady said. They're an advanced extraterrestrial civilization from the solar system of Arcturus. So I was thinking, is that related? So I went to her website and she has a whole bit all about the uh, Arcturian, sorry, her Arcturian healing. So according to her, this is Brandy Kahn's Arcturian healing method. It's the Arcturian healing method is a set of cosmic energies inspired by higher beings called Arcturians. So it is about those extraterrestrials. Oh my <laughs> it's on Wikipedia. This is the BT lady. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Can you but imagine telling that to your instructors? Uh, either that or she's playing the game and she doesn't tell her instructors, but she does this on the side. That could be a possibility too. Uh, so who knows? Wow. I don't know. And it is a mu- multi-dimensional form of healing that is meant to accelerate your personal evolution. Light, energy, and information are encoded within the Arcturian frequencies. Of course, we've got to get frequencies in there. And this approach brings balance to physical, emotional, mental, and spiritually subtle bodies, or spiritual subtle bodies. And, you know, it goes on in her sessions. The, the sessions aren't cheap. The first one uh, is at $88. I mean, I charge $60 an hour to teach math and this Canadian dollar. So that'd be like your 40 or something. (laughs) So, you know, this is what always kind of makes me a little bit angry is when, when something like this is being, there's a lot of money and it goes all the way up to like $440 for a bunch of sessions. And I found, you know, it's got all the, the classic uh, talk, you know, about how it's going to improve you you know, things like life path, a life path alignment, life functioning upgrades, energetic clearing and protection, facilitating a connection with your higher self, and offered in conjunction with powerful intergalactic frequencies. That's in the first one. If you go, you want to pay more money, you get a little more. And then you start activating your pineal gland activation, which apparently helps you sleep. And it act, it's stress activation of the thunder chakra so it starts getting into chakras in the second level you can buy and i'm i'm summarizing there's a lot more this is just a couple things that's in here and it awakens the third eye tunnel which is apparently also something to do with sleep and activation of the three guardian shields surrounding the body and it gets into other Oh, this one was interesting. Activation, I'm going to say this wrong. <laughs> Maybe we should get you to say it, Susan. Of the oh, no. Uraeus okay. or unicorn light. Um, Greg and I unicorn tried to light? figure out what that meant. We couldn't figure unicorn it out. Unicorn light? Like uh, a yeah, light bulb or unicorn yeah. light as in no. not as much unicorn as... No, no L-I-G-H-T. And apparently we figured out it has to do with some kind of mythology, possibly. Going back to, I think it was Egypt, but we're not sure. We tried to find that one out. We couldn't find it anything out about it. Maybe somebody else can. And there was one that I thought was really interesting. I'm trying to find it right now because it talks about, did I miss it here? So real unicorns? I don't know. Or it's just- I guess so. Okay, no, you said mythology. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm get, but it just says activation of the (laughs) Uraeus or unicorn light. So I don't know what it is. And it talks about in here, downloading sort of the energy and they're using like almost computer terminology. So I thought it was really interesting how they, they co-opt these terms and put it into what they're talking about and try and sell it. So yeah, the last one is eight sessions or something like that. And it's 404, oh, five sessions. Oh my goodness, I was being generous. Five sessions. It's called Blueprint Activation for $440. And I have no idea how long those sessions are. I don't know. Wow. No. So I, I'm going to warn you, Adrian, that because we're doing this on Facebook Live, the comments that we're going to receive, oh my God, we have some people are just all the same as I come in as I, as I see 
So Klaus Larson, all the way over Hi, there. Klaus. <laughs> Adrian's so happy. Um, <laughs> all the way over there on the other side of the world. He, he wants to know about those vibrations, how many hertz they are. And Amelia says, Michelob unicorn light, like the beer. <laughs> That's awesome. Somebody should come up with that. Lee <laughs> says he's hurting himself with laughter already. Lee, we're just beginning. This is the beginning. And Klaus says, where's the wine? He went uh, I wine. was waiting for that comment. Why? Because we have a running joke going on on oh, Facebook between, you, between us two about wine. And he would be horrified to know that this A&W wine <laughs> has ice in it and a straw. I got a straw. I got a straw too same straw <laughs> so okay so um uh let me pause for a second and say i looked up her college degree and i didn't get her i don't know where her degree degree is from mm -hmm. her right master, her undergrad her undergrad yeah is from mill millsaps college m-i-l-l-s-a-p-s -L -L -S and it is a liberal arts college in mississippi and i don't want to say anything bad about mississippi it's Mississippi. It's affiliated with the United Methodist Church. I'm sure they loved hearing all about this. It was founded in 1889 by a Confederate veteran. Well, anyway, so she went to this school and she got a degree. It's a private liberal arts college mm -hmm. in Jackson, Mississippi. And it is, um, um, looks like a you know it's accredited and so on it's 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 a real school and she got her degree in French and Spanish okay nothing impressive. wrong with that let me no. tell you very impressive you become one of my GSOW editors yeah <laughs> <laughs> she started in 96 she graduated in 2001 so she probably had her kids that's that's hard work yeah and her master's degree as she says um, I'll just say what it is she says here she's talking about her grandmother on face this is on her public facebook i'm not her facebook friend you can see people's facebook pages pretty darn easy she has a master's degree in psychology with a specialization in child psychology and she's going on to talk about her grandmother from mississippi and how proud her grandmother would be of her i'm sure she would education was important as a black woman in mississippi she was able to up overcome many obstacles to earn her master's degree in education and later an education specialist degree. So she, so this is from Brandy's site that her grandmother got a huge education and that was a big deal in, in uh, oh, yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. She says, Brandy says, when I was younger, she and my grandfather would give us encyclopedias and books as gifts. She even gave us some of her old textbooks. And my sister and I would play school with her books. And we were the kids who played school when they were not in school. That all sounds wonderful and mm -hmm. amazing. And I bet her grandmother would be proud of her. Mm -hmm. This part, I'm not so sure her grandmother would be proud of her. She says, my mother, grandmother was a Capricorn. <laughs> Which means that, you know, in her world, hard work and achievement were important. Um, so she's saying that, okay, so her grandmother would say, always ask her about school. How's school going? But she attributes that to her being a Capricorn. So um, she, uh, she says she never really understood my, I'm not quite sure she would, she ever really understood my decision to be a stay-at-home mom, but I know she'd appreciate the fact that I've devoted, devoted so much of my energy into educating my own children and it hasn't been easy and, and blah, blah, blah. And grandma would say, never give up. And I'm sure homeschooling and raising four kids and being a stay-at-home mom is a hell of a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem. And I think a lot of women would say, you're raising your kids, you're you're educating your kids, hopefully not on this other nonsense, but I think she is, mm -hmm. um, is an important task. And mm -hmm. staying at home is a big decision to be able to, yep. make, to do that. That's, that's a big deal. So grandma, I'm sure would be very proud of her. They look like they're fine kids. You can see her Facebook page yourself. I'm not going to share them here and uh good for her um she seems like somewhere she went off the road you know yeah well be, she figured out that she must be an arcturian star seed <laughs> that's the person who can do the arcturian healing just so you know 
And we figured out last night because we went through all the qualifications for how, how can you know if you're an Arterian starseed and should be able to do this healing? I'd like to know. I might be one. <laughs> Our listeners out there right now might be. There's like well, what, are the, what are the signs? Give me the signs. Well, some of it is that, you know, you like science. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. You like science? <laughs> that was one of them. Yeah. You like and you're, t- like you're tall. No, science. Oh, science. Yeah. Oh, you said science. No, Your science. Accent, that Canadian accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. It's, it's the accent for sure. Uh, another quality, and I'm just doing this off the top of my head because we we read well, I'm sure there's no a lot. Later. yeah so you know i'm probably saying it a little bit wrong uh one of them was being tall so i'm going ooh tick tick oh, maybe i could what? be an arcturian star seed you're you out to be tall apparently uh, well uh, most star seeds are tall apparently and I, I don't know what that means maybe if you're five foot zero that's tall i don't know it doesn't qualify it <laughs> i've never in my entire life been called tall <laughs> i have <laughs> so Paul says are you sure she said Arcturian and not octo- octogenarian? <laughs> I didn't know exactly what she said. So I went onto Brandy's website and it actually is written as Arcturian. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you have so to be tall. It's checked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you have to be tall and you have to be sort of empathic towards other people. You feel other people suffering. It goes on to a lot of these things. I can do and- that. And that you have to be really organized nope. and organized. exactly. So you just have to grow taller and you could do it. Can I wear heels? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Can I get a little lift to my feet? I'm only like five, three years. So something. a lot of the, most of it's pretty generic, you know, that it's the typical Barnum statement where it's going to fit everybody. So everybody's going to think they're going to become Arcturian star seeds. So it's, it's and then you pay a core, pay money, right? To, to get certified. Oh, oh, oh. So you have to pay. Is well, yeah, you have to go and get the, one of the criteria is you have to be identified as an Arcturian star seed by an Arcturian star seed. So you have to go to a psychic who has this qualification and he'll say yes or no, but you have to pay money. So there you go. There's the so catch. You, so she had to go and get she yeah. had to seek out a psychic who had the skill mm-hmm. saying that in lightly in quotation marks <clears throat> and they identified her as being one of these people yes. i don't know how tall she is but she didn't look tall to me and maybe she wears lifts of her with her kids <laughs> maybe her kids are super <laughs> short but she is not <laughs> tall i guess you don't have to meet all of them maybe you have to meet eight out of ten or something who knows i'm really disappointed to know that my height is just come on now that's not fair <laughs> i can do we, everything a tall person can if i there have you go. a ladder and like something. it's very discriminatory isn't it yeah <laughs> maybe my and, other life i don't know yeah yeah so i somehow she's got this i don't know if it's an actual certificate or she just called Pretty herself that fun. who knows i don't know but probably she got the certificate somewhere i'm guessing okay so everybody's ready. They're awesome. they're going to um, watch. I am going to play now her thing. Now, Adrian, you have powers too. So if you, th- right. I think you can. No, you can't stop the video. I can't stop can't the video. Stop no. the video. Okay, I was going to so say you're, I'm under you your can control. End the video, but of course, it's still be playing. But anyway, I yeah. want to. I don't know how far we're going to get through her thing because okay. this is intense. Mm -hmm. so let's see you guys i want to see some questions adrian and and greg have done oh that's her her partner have done a lot of research on this so if you have questions about (laughs) what she's going to say they're going to be able to answer them for you i just know it because i'm not going to be able religion that taught that anything dealing with spirit intuition energy that it was that it was bad it was evil demonic and, and you needed to avoid it 
Okay, so at 16 years of age, I intentionally closed down my abilities and I made the decision that I would ignore all gut feelings that I had about people and situations. And because of that, um, I remember being the type of person I was always looking to others outside of me for the answers. Okay, I was always asking people, well, what's your opinion? What do you think that I should do? And I didn't realize that all of the answers were within me if I would just stop and listen into what I was feeling and what I was hearing, okay? I, I made the decision, it wasn't until my late 20s that I decided to open up again. And when I became a mother, I, I knew that I wanted to teach my children about intuition and how to use their intuition and why it's so important. And because of my early experiences, I really feel for sensitive children who are growing up in, in our society today because many of them are being given a message that, you know, something's only real if you can see it, if it's tangible, if it can be felt, otherwise it's not real, right? Meanwhile, you, and you've got sensitive children who are seeing, hearing, and feeling things that the adults in the room are telling them that are not real. And, and they are being told it's just your imagination. You're just imagining it. If, if there's one piece of advice that I could give you that I hope that you take from me today, it's if your child is having these types of experiences, please don't tell them that it's just your imagination, honey, because that message that can be um, very invalidating. And, and, and then the child begins to wonder, well, can I trust myself? Can I trust what I'm feeling? Can I trust what I'm what I'm picking up? And then they begin to look to to others for the answers that they already know within. Now, as an astrologer, I do natal chart sessions for parents who want to know more about the astrology and their children's charts. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with natal charts, basically it's like a snapshot of the heavens at the moment that you were born, okay? So at the exact time that you were born, the exact minute, the sun was in a particular location in the sky, and so was the moon, so was Mercury, along with all of the other planets. And, and depending upon where they are located and, and, and where they are situated in relationship to each other, um, you were born with a certain set of potentials, okay? A certain set of personality characteristics, uh, gifts, abilities, difficulties, challenges that you may face, okay? we can also see the aptitude or the ability, spiritual ability, the, the potential that is there within the natal chart. So, you know, I've been doing charts for younger children for their parents. And it's just, it's surprising to me because so many um, of our young children are coming in so sensitive already and, and, and with so much potential to be very spiritually aware. And nine times out of 10, uh, their, their parent was unaware that their child had this potential or has this ability. And, and, and the parent was unaware that the child is going to experience and, and perceive life in different ways than they did, okay? So what do you do um, if you don't have a natal chart in hand for your child and, and you wanna know like if, if they are sensitive, how does it show up? How does it manifest? I will spend the next few minutes just describing nine characteristics of spiritually gifted children. And if you are a parent or a grandparent, aunt or uncle, anybody who is interacting on a consistent basis with children, children in your lives, please listen carefully for any characteristic that may identify the child in your life as being sensitive. Why is this so important? Well, because you, you could be that one person in, in, in your child's life or in, in a child's life, that one person that affirms them, that validates them, and that lets them know that they are okay just as they are, just as they are. So the first characteristic, the first thing that you may notice is a very high level of sensitivity. Okay, now this can be physical sensitivity or it can be emotional sensitivity. Now with physical sensitivity, um, you may notice that your child is sensitive to loud noises or loud environments. They may be very sensitive to Adrian. Yeah. Yeah. 
you have a question? I did, oh, where, where was I typing that, by the way? Where's my what? No, never mind. I was typing a note to you and it just kept disappearing. No, it's so. Well, I saw something. Uh, Klaus had a really good question. How do you know, how do you distinguish between a child with imagination and a child with some special powers? And exactly. How, and, or children, or do no children have imaginations? Oh, very good question. Yeah. So if this is, so what we see, well, what she sees as um, a sensitivity mm -hmm. is what, the rest of the world would see as an imagination correct that's a really interesting how do you think she'd answer that that's a really good question i bet she would try to differentiate somehow the difference between it or maybe she would say that all kids with imagination have this uh sensitivity i guess she could answer that as that way as well which would mean that every child has the potential to be a sensitive and spiritually gifted child and when she said, don't just say, ah, it's just your imagination. Well, she's not 100% wrong, as with all these things. You don't want to dissuade your children from their imagination. I think that, that any parenting book will say you don't do that. I would agree with this, but you don't shut down the learning either. You can talk about it as being part of your imagination, and that's okay. And maybe explore further, but hopefully, eventually, in reality... <laughs> may, I mean, depending on the age of the, the kid, I know my oldest for the longest time wanted to be the number one and he would go to sleep crying at night because he was not the number one. <laughs> so, you know, we didn't tell him, well, you know, too bad, so sad. We just gave him a hug and said, yeah, you're not the number one. But, <laughs> but for Halloween, we can make you the number one. And we did. So that that made him very happy. <laughs> so these the imagination is is normal i would say what she's talking about is normal and i'm not sure what she's trying to say not to do other than uh, i guess she's saying that as the kids grow if you squash it they won't reach their spiritual potential do you think that's what she's trying to say well you know she's she's giving good advice but mm -hmm. for the wrong reasons i mean mm -hmm child has some sort of potential or interest or whatever I yeah. think that's all wonderful and mm -hmm. you shouldn't squash it and you should listen to your absolutely kids. but she, she seems to have an at the very basics she says that when you were born <clears throat> at the very a snapshot at the he, of the heavens mm -hmm. from the moment you were born mm -hmm. so she seems to think that when you were born your destiny is decided for you, but yet the parent needs to nurture the child along that destiny. So mm -hmm. if you are not born, you know, I was into sun, sun signs and, mm -hmm. and all that when I was growing up, Linda Goodman's sun signs. And it was an odd thing. You know, if you were an outgoing person, I was a Leo. So I was very outgoing and friendly and, and, um, you and I both. Yeah, that's true. We both are extroverts. <laughs> and, but how did I, how, so to explain when you didn't have those moods, whatever the, the characteristics of a Leo, then we brought in the moon sign and the rising moon and the made a fit. Moon and all that yeah. other stuff and where Venus was and it gets to be much more complicated. So I guess that's what she would say if a child is born under, I don't know, a Taurus or a Gemini or a Cancer sign and maybe I get the child wants to be more into a field i don't know i can't remember my signs really well right. is there one yeah, that's definitely anything. not into like nursing and caregiving and mm -hmm. well leo is not so if a if a leo child wants to go into the medical professions because they're feel they're very nurturing children mm -hmm. well leo is not traditionally known as a nurturing sign so she's saying that that wouldn't be a field the child would go into right a leo yeah. is not that 
I guess she would just bring in the natal chart and say, oh, no, you've got this Capricorn over here. And that's going to Well, the whole natal, natal chart thing is really interesting. In fact, in the Skeptic Zone newsletter that I just read for last week. On the Skeptic Zone podcast. On the Skeptic Zone podcast, the, there's in the silly story of the week, there's actually something about that, which, and, the, and you talk to the harms. And this is, I think, a little bit crazy because- According to the zodiac signs, this this psychic, Inbal Honigman, and she's from Yorkshire, she apparently wanted all her ch children to have compatible zodiac signs. So for her, uh, one of her, her fourth kid, was it fourth kid? No, the, th the first child was due. She arranged the baby be induced on a day when she would be a Pisces. <laughs> I think that's going to extremes. Do we have... I mean, there's medical issues with having being induced, obviously. That's amazing. Yeah. And, Just so that her kid would be in a I mean, did they, did she, oh my God, no freaking way. Did yeah. she tell the medical, her doctor, I need to have the baby on this day because I need her to be a Pisces? I have no idea. That's all it says. <laughs> the doctor. Yeah. So maybe the doctor believed in it too. Who knows? Maybe she found Or uh, maybe the doctor said, okay, well, we can accommodate you because the baby will be okay too. Yeah. It's yeah. either maybe and here's the like risk. Here's the risk. A couple of days. You yeah. Know, like, okay. A couple of days this way, a couple of days yeah. that way. It'll yeah. work out okay. And maybe there was some other medical issue, but that's accordingly, or according wow. to the report, it was because she wanted the kid to be a Pisces rather than an Aries. If it had been born a few days later, it would have been an Aries. So there's a harm. And the other thing that I noticed that she said was, and this is the math teacher in me, she says nine out of 10 parents are unaware that their kids are sensitives. Nine out of 10 <laughs> doctors recommend. <laughs> I wonder where she got that number from. Sensitive. <laughs> does that mean there's a lot of sensitive kids out there too? That's another thing. You know, what does that number mean? There's all kinds of weird things in that nine out of 10 that she says, and how does she even get there? But apparently... We're pretty clueless as parents. So, well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Well, I was too. I always say that a kid should be not born with a handbook, but it should be accompanied with a, a child psychologist that can <laughs> help you get, get through everything. <laughs> I didn't know a damn thing. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Klaus says if your destiny is, is decided the moment you're born due to your horoscope. Mm -hmm. A lot of Greenlanders north of, oh, God, don't make me say these words, Klaus. I don't know what these words say. Okay, I'll, I'll say them. <clears throat> a lot of Greenlanders north of Nook, like Sismuk, and... I need to find this. Manasut, Zugu, and he <laughs> did this on purpose are going to get really pissed off because those towns are situated above the polar circle and thus have no ascendant. It is a bad idea to piss off a Greenlander, especially about their future. Awesome. And, and Pontus is here. So, oh, hey, Pontus. So he would know. So in Greenland, they do not have an ascendant. That is really interesting. Mm -hmm. I had never thought about that before. And they're going to be really pissed off because their destiny is decided by i'm sure brandy will have a reason to yeah, it'd be very interesting maybe you should have her on an interview or how if she would actually do it well i'm sure she's going to watch this video she might be here for our live feed right now you know this is another <laughs> thing that uh that uh Klaus put in the chat it was about an actor no uh yeah model. i saw that earlier frederick von uh, let's see if you could do a better job M I E R E R S. He spelled it out. It's Mierers. Mierers. See, I still can't do it, Klaus, but thank you for trying. Yeah. I'm. Oh, he did. I thought he was just like in pain and he was just typing it out like how it hurts. So he sent a link. It's how the world's first male supermodel escaped an abusive doomsday sex cult. And it was written in 2021 mm. by Amy Zimmerman for the entertainment reporter, entertainment reporter for the Daily Beast, if you want to look it up. And it is, I just glanced through it, but apparently he was, this is an art, art, 
Arcturus. Is this the yeah. same thing? She's yeah, doing? that's that, that Arcturian that's healing. Called. So it might be related. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's many different branches of variations of this. When I looked online for Arcturian healing, there were tons of websites that came up and many of them are similar, but they have variations. I think they kind of. Okay. So it might not be it. that Brandy's. No. Sex cult. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> it's just, there's other ones too that Greg found. He just, he really went down the rabbit hole. It, there's all kinds of healers. Your just join a sex cult. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's all kinds of healing practices from all different stars and planets from all over. So you can, it's. It was pretty crazy. He was having a good time looking into this. So, <laughs> okay, all right, great. all right. So, we'll are we going to get into? Next. Yeah, yeah. There we go. The, the characteristics of sensitive child. Are we going to listen to the whole thing? Oh yeah, let's go back. Nobody's com nobody's groaning yet, so I will not <laughs> mute. Which is really weird that it that that was a problem. Yeah, because the the first few were pretty mundane normal things that kids go through like hypersensitivity that's certainly something my kids oh, have yeah. that comes along with Tourette that syndrome uh, uh, autism spectrum I was, disorder I was definitely thinking autism was yeah the yeah she was, and, she was saying I was uh, yeah. thinking she was going to get into the what is it the indigo children oh interesting yeah but she didn't no no but they're they're common to many kids so again there's these statements that can be fit to most people and then we start getting into the fun stuff so we'll we'll let her say it keep it going let's bright lights and they may be sensitive to pain as well no <laughs> kidding with emotional <laughs> sensitivity your child may feel things on a very very deep level and if there's someone around them that is in emotional despair or they're in emotional distress um, your child may feel that person's emotions as if they are their very own it can be confusing for them it can be overwhelming so please keep that in mind that with children with this level of sensitivity because they're receiving information not only from their through their physical senses and from our physical world but they're also receiving information energetically from the energetic environment around them okay another spiritual gift is clairvoyance which means clear seeing and clairvoyance is the ability to perceive objects and images that are not present to the senses and clairvoyance can occur objectively and you see like someone in spirit the same way that you're seeing me right now or it can occur subjectively and when it's subjective it feels almost as if it occurs within the mind's eye within the imagination all right so we have young children who are clairvoyant and many of them are able to see and interact with the spirit world and 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 that's why you'll hear some young children talk about their imaginary friends mm -hmm. now to the adults in the room that, that 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 can't see quite what's going on they think that it's make believe they think that it's pretend but trust me for that child it's a very very real experience I'll tell you a story about my daughter. She's 16 years old now, but when she was five years old, one morning she woke up, the sun was out, her room was well illuminated, and she opened her eyes and there was a young boy that was standing at the foot of her bed. And he looked a lot like her older brother. Um, and so she was unsure as who he was. So she asked him, are you Amir? Amir is my son's name. Are you Amir? And um, he stood there and he looked at her. He never said a word but he smiled and he shook his head and then he disappeared into thin air, okay? And um, she told me about the experience later on that day and I was unsure as to what to make of it, but I did listen to her and I validated her. Well, two weeks later, I had my own experience where I also saw this same little boy that appeared to her. I was bent over the bathtub, running uh, the bath water for the baby, and out of the corner of my eye over here, could have sworn it was my oldest son that walked into the bathroom and, and walked behind me, and I thought he was going into the closet. So I turned around very quickly um, to ask him to hand me the bubble bath, and lo and behold, when I turn around, there's nobody there. 
nobody there at all. And I had just seen this young boy walk in behind me. I run upstairs to go find my oldest son. He's in the toy room. It was virtually impossible for him to have been there. So then I knew, I was like, okay, this is the same little one that my, that my daughter um, also saw. Then two weeks later, my husband saw him as well. We never figured out who he was or why he was there, but over a period of time, he just stopped appearing altogether. But my daughter, my five-year-old was the first one to see him and interact with him. Okay. Number three is clear audience, which means clear hearing. And clear hey, audience Susan? is the gift of being able to yeah, hear the that. spirit world. Now, okay. clear audience can occur objectively, and and you hear spirit the same way you're hearing me now. Let's or talk. He- let's talk about the this little boy. The clairvoyance. Yes, that is not creepy at all. That you have your okay. First off, she says my daughter, and you're thinking okay, teenage daughter. No, it was a five year old daughter mm-hmm. who said she saw this little boy, mm-hmm. and absolutely, you can see people out of the corner of your eye, especially when you're in a household with multiple children. I hope mm-hmm. she didn't leave that baby in the bathtub. That's the first. Well, thing. it was the daughter woke up was the first one. Daughter oh, yeah, woke yeah. up to see she the woke boy up to find a boy, you're right, which is right. probably like a hypnopompic hallucination. Yeah, which I think many people have experienced. I've certainly experienced it as an adult. You don't have to be a kid. It's I, I once had a Dementor hovering over me. Oh, did you really? <laughs> I did. Harry Potter. Harry Potter Dementor hovering Had over me. Come out the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. yes. It it I believe it was after the movies had come out, and I can't remember if it was at oh, shortly after. That. But yeah, it was, and I knew about these hypnopompic hallucinations, so it was kind of like. Oh, cool. There's a Dementor over my bed. <laughs> you wouldn't say that. <laughs> of course I would. And I actually, I didn't have the, you know how it can also have sleep paralysis involved. Well, I did not have the sleep paralysis. I actually sat up and tried to touch it and my hand went right through it. It was very cool. Oh, wow. I've never heard this story before. I'm <laughs> Yeah, I know. So I think that this is what always confuses me when I hear people like this talking about these experiences is have they not heard of hypnopompic hallucinations. If she's been in psychology, it would be very, very unlikely that she has not heard of them. Well, she says I, that was when her child was five. Mm-hmm. And she just got her master's now and her kids mm-hmm. are teenagers. So it would have been a long time ago. Right. She so she might not have. Ago. Right. Well, when was this video? Was it before she got oh, her this, master's? This video is 2021. Okay. So she got her master's since then. She got her master's since then. Okay. So, so then in 2023, she's got her master's degree. I wonder if she would change her tune on that story after going through a course like that. I, I think this lady's too far into the woo. You think? No. Yeah. It would take a lot of work to get this woman out of out of this. She has and, to get herself out. Yeah, but, very, very much so. And no. it, and what you were talking about with her seeing the little boy out of the corner of her eye. Yeah, that's totally normal. A normal thing to apparently our vision off to the side is not very good. And so our brain fills in the details. Mm -hmm. And so it's quite normal for that to happen. And in fact, there was an article that I found on Sci.News that actually had a link to tests that you could do where your brain will fill in the sides. It was very cool. And I thought I'd put the link in here, but I didn't. So I may have to find that for you. And you can put it in the the notes for for the video in, in YouTube. But it was really cool. I did it. I actually did it. And all of a sudden there was your brain just fills everything in to be all one pattern. It was really kind of cool to do. So, so it's very typical. That, that it could have been her older son who would have been probably, well, if her daughter is five and she says he's her older son, doesn't mean that he was older than five. He could have been four. Yeah. Well, and, been and just as, and just... I think we've all had that experience though, where we think there's some, there's a movement we detect and we think it's a person. And we turn and there's nothing there, right? It's it's not that unusual to happen. So I don't she see says, any... she's giving the baby a bath. So yeah. she's at an angle down here like this, yeah. leaning into the bathtub, and she thinks she sees something out of the corner of her eye, and then yeah. she thinks it's coming behind her, and she's going to tell him to give her the bubble bath. Which yeah. is, I, I kind of wonder about that. Hand me the bubble bath when you're giving a baby a bath everything is there you don't leave the baby to turn around and go Mm -mm. through stuff so that just that statement felt odd Mm. having a bubble bath well i guess if it's back here and you could you don't leave a child unattended especially 
So, and her memory could be skewed too. You know how memory works. Like she may have just forgotten the right. And then Klaus details. and I both said, "Did she get up and run up to go check to see yeah. on her son? That's I, right. you know, did she leave the baby? Did she? Yeah. Because I, I doubt she left the baby. No. But that means you've got to scoop up a baby that's mm -hmm. wet and slimy, not slimy, but you know, wet and everything. So you got to take it and wrap it up in a blanket. That, yeah. That's time. There's time. Yeah. Get the baby out of the bath." wrap yep. it up, put the baby safely somewhere or carry it with you up these stairs to the toy room. There, there's plenty of time in that amount of time that a four-year-old or even her daughter, somebody could be moving out of the corner of her eye that that had been downstairs where, where the, she was at the bath. She makes it sound like that's just not possible. Yeah, yeah but exactly. of course it's possible. In the and, scenario and she's laid out. Well, and I think it's also a bit, a bit, <laughs> a bit creepy that she, she jumped to, this is her daughter talking to the spirit world, right? I mean, yeah. the first connection with the spirit world, I don't know, there's something creepy well, about Well, now her it. daughter's special. Yeah. I've, I noticed that like on Thomas John's video, mm. uh, um, um, Operation onion ring with, with the kids yeah with the kids where he's yeah. re giving readings to the kids how badly the parents want their child to be special mm. we all I guess that's pretty normal I was, yeah we all do for sure yeah you that know. says that they could be really cool sometimes they can be really cool other times quite scary I guess what she's talking about about the the um seeing something out of the corner of your eye and yeah and she says her husband saw some saw the little boy well, yeah did he really out did of the corner he... of his eye again i mean they didn't see him directly i'm sure and yeah or in a dream or whatever it was it was also interesting that the little girl waking up from a dream saw a boy who looked like her brother yeah i mean it'd be different if i guess if he saw something that was not something she normally would have ever seen yeah i don't know yeah no, that's interesting <laughs> That so that's terrifying. So we can get on to the the Claire audience and okay, the, all the other Claire so a whole yeah. bunch of Claires. I didn't know there were so many Claires. Claire. <laughs> come from planet Claire. And, oh yeah, this is here. Cool. Uh, come oh. from planet Claire, and then she came from there. Do you guys like that song? She drove up limits at a light uh, faster than the speed of light. <laughs> it's B fifty two, you guys. That's your yeah. your new career coming through. Yeah, you got to be there. You got to be there. there. Okay, so we'll stop after she does her steps. That makes more sense. Yeah, that's. I think that's good now. Yep. And when it's subjective, it sounds almost as if it's um, your own inner voice that you hear speaking to you, like almost inside of your head. So that's clear audience. Another spiritual ability, number four, is clear sentience, which means clear feeling. And it can manifest as a strong gut feeling or the ability to sense emotions and energy, okay? And you guys, I'm sure many of you have experienced clear sentience before. Have you ever had a bad feeling in the pit of your stomach with a strong knowing that there was something that you are not supposed to do? Okay? If so, that's clairsentience. That's how it manifests. That's how it feels. I'll share another experience. Um, I was an eighth grader in junior high, and my best friend and I, uh, we were out behind her house. Um, her, the, the area behind her house was heavily wooded. So we decided to go into the woods and explore, right? So we go deeper and deeper into the woods and, and we come across what looks like a small house um, or a shed. And we stood at a distance, you know, looking at this house and um, she turned to me and she said, let's go take a look. Let's go look in the windows. Let's go see if anybody's there. And I swear it was like my feet were, were um, glued to the ground um, and I could not move forward. And I told her, no, I don't I don't have a good feeling about this. And she turned to me again and said, oh, come on, don't worry about it. You know, nobody's probably there. Let's let, let's go take a look. And I said, no, I don't feel good about this. I think we should go back to your house. And um, that time she did listen. We, we went back to her house and it was a good thing that we did because we later found out um, an adult 
verified that there was uh, a gentleman who lived in this little shed, um, somewhat of a sketchy character. And, um, you know, with us being young girls, we should have been nowhere near the vicinity of this man's home. Okay, so that, that that's just one example of um, clairsentience, how the messages can come in and, and why you should listen, why you should heed them. If your children talk about gut feelings, I would encourage you to always listen to their gut, always follow that feeling. Number. Oh, boy. My God, <laughs> I had no idea all these years I had been practicing. What is this, Claire? What? Claire sentience. Claire sentience. Do you want to say anything about Claire audience? Uh, not particularly. I didn't have any notes. I think really the Claire sentience is the fun I one with the hut in the woods and the scariness and the gut what feeling. And what the heck is wrong with this person? <laughs> it, those those are are. are in my opinion, really good instincts that all of us have, right? That's a survival instinct. We well, don't go well, into the unknown survive, place. Those instincts. Yeah. Like, don't get into a submarine and go to see the Titanic with an uncertified. Oh, oh my, my God. Yeah. yeah. That's going on right now for people who are watching this. Yeah. Speech. Oh my goodness. Yes. That, my gut instinct says maybe that's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, Ooh. and and then to it's it's also interesting to me how in the end she says yes, there was a person of questionable character that was in the house. Well, it didn't yeah. say that they were wanted for something no. or had a criminal. I mean, there was it was what just does that even mean? sense. Yeah, I mean, it was probably just a guy who lived there. That was <laughs> so, very judgmental. I thought it was very her. judgmental. I thought, you know, why? Well, I don't think it's, well, when we were growing up, and this is probably true for you, especially in Canada, where it's so safe, um, <laughs> you just got up in the morning and you got with your buddy friends and you got on your bikes and maybe you packed a lunch and you left for the day. Mm -hmm. And then your parents would maybe scream out your name at dinner time and say, hey, dinner is here. And that, they never saw you again. Yeah. And, and nowadays... I would never have raised my kids that way. Oh my God, no way. I want to know where they were. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it's, it was, it's a, it, out there. Very, it's the a woods, strange story. Very strange story. In the woods of Mississippi, probably yeah. out wandering around with her friend in the woods. And she was nervous about going into a dark forest and seeing a house and looking through the windows. Yeah. Exactly. And most likely the guy who was living there was harmless is my guess. Could easily have been harmless, but yeah. I mean, he still probably shouldn't be going up to people. Uh, not at all. The windows. No, exactly. <laughs> Kat says, because non-sketchy people live in sheds in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. If they're not living in the woods in a shed, I'm sure they're just fine. And there would be not, there would be but the it's thing like is, is this woman is giving this as evidence. Yeah. These yeah. are examples of evidence. Yeah. There's clearly some misconnect in her. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I think she probably believes this. Yeah. No. Okay. It's, Let's go to yeah. the next one. Let's go see what, see what she's got to say about this next one. <laughs> Number five is clear cognizance or clear knowing. And this is when your child will just know things out of the blue and there's no explanation for how they know a particular piece of evidence. Like, so for example, they know that great, great grandfather's middle name was Edward and, and nobody ever told them that nobody ever shared that with them. It's almost as if the information was just dropped into their heads. Okay. That's clear cognizance. You just know, and you're not sure how you know but you know okay let's 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 stop with <laughs> so do you think this woman's child came up to her mom did you know that great 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 grandpa's middle name was fred and nobody's ever told me that before but i just happened to know it do you think that that's <laughs> where she got that example from i have no idea what where she's getting it from but uh, my note is very straightforward here. Just knowing things without anyone telling them, ha, prove it. <laughs> 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 the 
because of I think course. kids here overhear stuff and they're they're like sponges and right. they learn it. And you could have said it a month ago in a conversation you didn't you didn't even know your kid was your kid there was for. To. Yeah. And they'll come out with that. They I, they pop out with amazing stuff all the time. That's what learning is about. So and I would like to know how many times they say something is going to happen or they know apparently know something yeah, that's yeah. wrong. How many, how many misses are there? Also? How, many misses, how many, how many other guesses did he have it? Mm -hmm. Why would the child be wanting to guess the, or name the great grandfather's middle name? Why would that even come up? It's very random. Fred? <laughs> do we know a Fred? I don't know any Freds. Yes, mommy. We do know a Fred. Great grandpa's middle name was Fred. <laughs> Why would that even come up in a conversation? Janice, Janice Boyton's here. She says, hey, Janice. Uh, they dropped in their heads by listening to a bunch of adults sitting around yep. at the table, swapping stories while the child was in the corner. Playing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and just assuming and, and going back to what Janice and I were talking about a lot with facilitated communication, this idea that they just know, mm -hmm. they just learned because mm -hmm. some people say that their child learned how to read by reading the back of a cereal box. Mm -hmm there's no other way they could possibly learn but just these odd things of they must have just known yeah boy this it's woman crazy. i really want to talk to her instructors in college because this is <laughs> it'd be really interesting how did you give her this degree that she got well maybe she legitimately owned it oh well, Klaus so I, has a question again oh. you know Klaus says he's got to ask a question <laughs> yeah i have a question what's the difference between Claire, or oh, where is it claire, claire cognizance, cognizance and clairvoyance. and clairvoyance in both cases they know things physically oh question yeah you want to answer that one i have no idea yeah it says <laughs> i remember the adults in my family always talking about how one of my uncles spoke with a thick southern drawl and yammered on about the american civil war we are we're canadian until he was about five years old now if, if you can believe them that is fascinating but there's no evidence this would have happened in the 1960s yeah yeah we kids are, absorb they do all the time yeah and so, there's also the possibility that they say something's going to happen and there's a coincidence and it does happen. That's possible. Yeah, Coincidences likely. happen. So that's and Fred is a common name. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very common name. Well, and if it's like my family, my family going back many, many, many generations, the middle name of the first boy is Clayton. So it could be something like that too. Yeah. You know, and like a common seems, family name. It seems knows? really odd she would say there's no way that anybody ever told him so i guess the only way in her mind is that a child could know is if somebody remembers going up to the child and saying yeah. i need to let you know the great grandpa's or great great grandpa's middle name was fred i want you to know that i i'm telling you yeah that little piece of information so there's no other way that you could find out this information unless somebody yeah. I, it's just so silly yeah oh my gosh yeah, this woman great. is sitting here telling all this and the people in the audience on zoom are, i i wonder what the other They're people are going i think most of them are eating oh, it yeah. up because it's it may it's a story it's storytelling people love storytelling and she's oh. very good at storytelling she's very charismatic right she's attractive they so, want to believe and they want to believe because she's a person authority she's mm -hmm. thomas john mm -hmm. who's this amazing person who has given her this position and of course it must be real mm -hmm. okay let's go see what the other step is i think that was step six and while you're doing that i think i'm going to look up uh, close's question okay number six precognition now precognition is is when your child may know things that are going to happen before they actually occur so they could receive a premon premonition through a dream or they just might have a clear knowing out of the blue that something is going to happen. All right. Number seven, the ability to communicate with animals. Okay, we'll stop on, we'll stop on that one. So precognition. They're going to know something. I was hoping she'd give us an example of her. Yeah, kids. no example. So I have no notes. <laughs> Yeah. So the only way you would know that something was going to happen. Yeah. So go back and remind me again to <laughs> why why we're why Brandy is doing this. These are the steps of what? What does this prove? Does this mean that you're an Arthurian child? 
No, this means you're a spiritual child or a, uh, a, a sensitive, a sensitive child. Sensitive. Yeah, that's what she called it, a sensitive child. You don't want to quash their sensitivity because it will quash their ability to communicate with spirits, etc. Okay, so I sensitive think in, in the realm of being correct. psychic. Yes, that's correct. Boy, almost everybody's psychic by this standard. Uh, cat says, you just have to yeah you just have to go and take a course from thomas john and then you'll you'll have it yeah i'm sure that would be not cheap okay the uh, audience buys into it because they've seen things out of the corner of their eye that they had gut feelings and they feel figure this must be true because they have felt that too so it confirm, yeah. confirms the bias oh, yes, absolutely and they want yeah. to believe this woman who's very charming and, and eloquent and, and she's got it well at the time she didn't have her master's degree in psychology but my goodness, if she's got a psychology degree and from a university, that's going to make everything she say, she says a little bit more, more uh, there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was, so we're going to go to the next one, which is, I believe pets. Yeah. This is when your child may know things that are going to happen oh. before they actually occur. So Sorry. Is, is when your child may know things that are going oh. uh, with animals. Like if you have dogs mm -hmm. or cats within the home or birds or, or just pets, your child might have a knowing of exactly what the animal is feeling or if there's something that they need. Now, along with that, there may be a love of being outside in nature, flowers, trees, plants, butterflies, that type of thing. You might also notice that, that children like this love to collect crystals like so for example this is a rose quartz um, and I, I'm noticing that a lot of young children they love these little crystals um, because of the high vibration that they emit they love to collect these you may notice that as well oh Number my lord oh man what the <laughs> heck children children who collect pretty stones, crystals yeah. nice pretty it shiny stones has nothing to do with what they look like or feel like it's because of the vibrational energy. Oh, yeah, yeah, vibrations. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's one of those words that means one thing to one uh, yeah. one part of the world of um, science and the other world of nonsense. Yeah. It's an interesting. And the whole different. thing about the love of being outside, well, there's very few children that don't love being outside. My youngest didn't love being outside because they didn't like the wind and bugs. But we had to get help and get them out of that. But my other two, oh my goodness, they wanted to be outside all the time. So I think that's more normal. 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 Yeah, I just <laughs> it's very strange. So the child so the child would notice that their their pet was suffering. Yeah. I, I like the fact she says a cat, a dog, a bird, or something, some other <laughs> pet. Well, how many other pets do you have? I guess lizards <laughs> and fish yeah but they needed yeah. something yeah like maybe the cat or the dog is hungry mm -hmm. or they want to be pet mm -hmm. or maybe they need more water or whatever and how do they know sometimes i think one of the big difficulties with having a pet is knowing when they're in pain and there are when they're in a lot of pain it's pretty obvious because they don't move they you know they're not being themselves mm -hmm. but if there's just a little bit of pain it's hard to tell and it's very difficult for even specialists like vets to figure out if there's something wrong sometimes i think so, children would be more in tune to when their <laughs> child when the, when the pet is suffering <laughs> because this is this is something they can relate to not yeah. like a and they're mom down, who's busy trying to do so many mm -hmm. other things and she's also got multiple children and more at their child, level too that's their focus is that yep. pet how do i know um let's see Pat says the pet snake is encouraging the girl to eat apples. And then she says, kids collecting rocks. I still collect rocks. And Janice thinks it's hilarious. A high vibration. It's not that they're shiny or pretty. It's the vibrations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's just amazing. Okay. Anything else you would say on her before I go to the next? Yeah, no, that's good. Okay. Let's see what else she's got to say. Eight. Eight. Your child may have the ability to heal themselves or to heal others around them. You may notice that there's an interest in healing. And the way that this shows up is um, without absolutely any prompting whatsoever, um, 
you may notice that your child will go and place their hands upon someone who's not feeling well or upon an animal who's not feeling well, okay? And the child may not even realize that they are acting as a channel. They're channeling healing energy from themselves, from up above, through their hands to the person or the animal that needs it. I would suggest if you, if you notice this with your child, to sign them up, enroll them in a level one children's Reiki class. I noticed that my daughter was doing that with our pets when she was younger. So I signed up my three oldest children um, for a children's Reiki class and they were all attuned to the energy. Now, when they were younger, they used it quite a bit. Now they're teenagers and they really don't use it anymore, but that's okay because the energy is still there. They still carry the energy. And if they want to use it in 10 years or 20 years, it's always there for them. Okay. That was, I, that one bothered me the most, I think of all of them, because she started talking about how the, how the child could heal themselves. And that always yeah. makes me worry about maybe people who get into, um, prayer and healing or mm -hmm. you know instead of treatment proper treatments yeah. or, or whatever that yeah. that makes me really worried I, I, she doesn't talk about vaccinations at all i'm kind of curious mm. if some of these mediums that we've encountered would have had an opinion on some of these um yeah things but that what she just said bothers me yes yeah self-healing it can also lead to blame it can also blame right i mean well you're not self-healing yourself just get get rid of your own fever, right? I want, I don't think they would ever be that mean, but that's kind of the feeling that you get when they say that they can self-heal. The other thing that I noticed she said was you can tell that they are healing when they touch people who aren't well or animals who aren't well. And I'm kind of thinking, well, I'm thinking of little kids. Little kids are very touchy. They yep. go around touching objects, they go around touching people all the time, and animals, etc. So how do you differentiate the touching? They're just noticing, oh, you know, grandpa's not feeling well, toddler went over and touched grandpa, curled that up kind with of them, thing. You know, and sat and maybe curled up and had yeah. a cup with them. That's, yeah. that's not weird. I mean, that, that, I mean, that's normal. That's normal, absolutely normal behavior. And if he was well, because grandpa doesn't come over all the time maybe that's what every time they go over they do so i found that one really weird and then to sign them up for a level one reiki class I was, oh man I just like, oh. lady do you need <laughs> child care that bad that you're going to sign them up for a, you're going to babysit them <laughs> all her children oh plus amelia says shocking all her children had the special gift I thought yeah. it was interesting. Yeah, I, I no, no, you don't, no, 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 no. You don't sign up your child to learn Reiki. Uh, Kat says, show yeah. empathy. And sometimes they just want to touch all the things. It Absolutely. Healing. Yeah. No, they're just touching. If, if kids yeah. could heal like that, we would just have hospitals full of little children. Wouldn't that be great? You would have just like, bring in the, bring in the kids, bring in, your bring in the babies, <laughs> bring in the sensitive kids. And they'd have like yeah. this mob of sensitive kids. Yeah. Forget the surgery. Everybody back off. Everybody <laughs> lay hands on the, and... that'd be a lot more fun in my opinion. I uh, <laughs> having surgery. But... The little hands, they had to put them up the stairs, climb up little ladders and they yeah. had their hands on people. Wash your hands first. But why would her kids, her own kids who went through Reiki practice, no longer do this i thought, I thought that was really interesting too they're interesting they rebelling against this, this mm -hmm. odd they've gone to school and said wait a minute what not everybody <laughs> is, learns all this stuff yeah i want to just fit in i don't want to be different yeah i don't want to be healing anybody anymore if there is a need like okay so the kids out and about and their friend comes over and they suddenly uh sprain their ankle or break a leg and they're they're like back off everybody i know reiki and they come up to the friend and they they're like grab and they're like here let me heal it it's like tom it reminds me of tom cruise and the scientology where they <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, it, the only person who could help in the case of a car accident, if there's a car accident, it, then you need an OT8 Scientologist and they'll come along and they'll take care of it. This is just getting ridiculous. Yeah. And I think yeah. the kids are rebelling. Just yeah. Uh, I'm th- I, I had that same thought when she said that, the exact same thought. Mommy's weird. <laughs> Mommy's not right. <laughs> Mommy. Well, the next the next one is a doozy, and I have a lot of notes. I okay. did some research. You guys all sitting down? You ready for the next one? Because I can't remember which one's next. I've seen so many videos, <laughs> and not only just because from the series, and then repeating the same ones over and over again. I'm like, wait, what was that? And I have to go back and listen again. So I can't remember which one's next. All right, let's oh, let's see what it is. The last characteristic that you may notice is you may have heard um, about children like this. So many of them are coming in with vivid, vivid memories of a past life, oh. past life memories. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you may have a, a, a daughter that comes up to you and says, you know, I had another mommy before you were my mommy. Or I used to live in a castle on a hill before I lived here with you. Uh, there's a book that's out it's called soul survivor about a young boy that was born and he had this inexplicably detailed knowledge of um u.s fighter aircraft used during world war ii he also knew the name of a specific base that was located within the Pacific, uh, Pacific Ocean and um, um, other people who had been serving on that base. What's so sad is after all the pieces of the puzzle were put together, it was deduced that this young boy had in a previous lifetime been a fighter pilot um, on that base who had uh, passed away in battle. He died in battle, but he remembered uh, these memories um, when, when he was born. Now, if your child, if, if they are having past life memories, what I would recommend, I would recommend keeping a journal, writing everything down, because from what I've read and what I've understood, they will talk about these memories um, when they're three, four, five, six, and then they start to fade. And then around like 10, 11, 12, it's like, oh, I really don't remember that much about it anymore. So when they're younger and, and they're opening up to you about this, I would suggest writing it down and just keeping an account of it somewhere. All right, so keep in mind that spiritually gifted children can grow up feeling very different from other children their age. Oh, I bet her kids have been feel like they've been very different. Okay, I remember now this. <laughs> I know this. I know exactly what story she's talking about. And yeah. it, is, and it is BS. Mm-hmm. And the media loves running with it. And mm-hmm. I was looking for that this morning, trying to find the... Um, I thought for sure it was covered in Skeptical Inquirer. I couldn't find it. Yeah, I couldn't find it in Skeptical Inquirer, but I did find a paper that a philosophy professor from San Francisco State University did. And he did a two-year study and had it published. And he refutes all kinds of stuff from the book, Soul Survivor. For example... Can you name his name? Oh, sorry, I didn't give his name. I Oh, I have to say his name. Michael... Suddeth, I believe it is, S-U-D-D-U-T-H. So it's Michael Suddeth. And there's lots online with him. He's got a blog. He's he got links to his paper. And a lot of people seem to refer to this particular study with regard to it, because he went into a deep dive looking into it, as I say, for two years. And the parents of the boy apparently followed the advice of a past life therapist. Oh, Lord. Yeah, six months after he started talking about this World War II stuff. And, you know, the, it was a dreams. The kid was dreaming, right? Dream, having these about war dreams. And fire uh, yeah. and things like mm-hmm. that. Or, or so they say he's... Correct. And many years after the story evolved, and there's multiple versions apparently of the, uh, of the story of available, documented in media, et cetera. So he just looked at all these different versions. And as time went on, it meshed more and more with the history that they were finding out about this World War II fighter pilot who died. They encouraged him and they they primed him and Mm -hmm. led him. And 
Don't you remember, sweetie, about the time that you were a fighter pilot named so and so and you died in a fiery blast and a F whatever number plane that I don't know? Don't you remember that? Yes, mommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And apparently there's a detailed account of this particular pilot's death that is in the record. And it is ignored by the parents in the media often. And it does not agree with the boy's account at all, apparently. They're very different. Did he go meet with a bunch of people, World War II vets, and said, and the and the parents were saying that um, this is a reincarnated friend of yours or whatever, and the and they're all like, yeah, sure, kid. <laughs> I don't know that story. I think that's what happened. Yeah, Somebody else surprised. will be able to remember. Yeah. I'm surprised this wasn't. Well, I guess if the guy did a lot of research on it, yeah, uh, it, it's kind of done. But I I thought for sure it was in. It might be. Bar. Maybe but I couldn't I didn't find, it. find it anywhere. And yeah. um, there's no Wikipedia page for it, which no. I was totally shocked about. Mm -hmm. I thought this was out of this, this exact study, this not study, this exact situation that that Brandy here is talking about is often quoted mm -hmm. as gospel, yeah. a proof of a reincarnation, as if she just watched a you know a fluffy piece on on tv or on youtube about it and yeah. now she's an expert because mm -hmm. all of this is garbage yeah every bit of it and including the it's very interesting how the child forgets at about 10 they don't forget they're like all right mom i was just no that none of that happened <laughs> uh and i think that's what happens yeah janice just put the link in here thank you very much ah thank you um she put a link to it in here but it is just nonsense and uh, these kids want nothing more to do with this. I think I also heard another one. Maybe it was this kid. Maybe it was another kid. Uh, they they interviewed him later. And the child says, I'm done with that because I need to live my own life. And yeah. I do not need to live the life of this fighter pilot anymore. Oh, yeah. She's got a good link in here. I'll, I'll try to I'll put this in the description of the YouTube video when it comes out. Yeah, I Crash think that's where burn. I got it from, actually. Crash and burn, James Lydale, yeah. her story debunked. Yeah. Um, and this it's is a good article. It's well done. By Michael Suddeth. And yeah, this is it. And um, really, really important um, psychologically for a child. And I mm -hmm. don't have a degree in child studies or uh, a degree in psychology or any of that but i think telling a child that they were somebody else and you were not you yep. is probably dangerous to yeah i think it could be confusing and yeah i could think it could be could be harmful for sure why especially when they get a lot of attention a, oh yeah for attention why would you yeah. take your kid why would you say oh let's take it to my my child to a past life regressionist <laughs> But do you think of what I meant by the attention is that think of this kid and all the media attention he's had and the then you, you, and the, yeah, the, the parents and him, but then if you stop believing in it later on, or you realize maybe this isn't really what happened, it's hard to back out of that because you've publicly made this ad admission. Yeah. That's why the child probably says, I don't want to talk about it anymore mm -hmm. because yeah. I want to be me exactly yep not so much they don't want to admit that they don't want the book sales to go away because this sold really well mm -hmm. and yeah. that's another thing there's that that probably paid for his education and so the family got some of the proceeds for the book they wrote the book I, oh did they i missed that little piece yeah the oh. parents wrote the book the book is written by the parents oh wow well, so um they they it's a big seller i wouldn't be surprised if there was a movie out on it i'm not yeah. sure no, I'm not kidding. Uh, it would sell well because it's all got all the BS in it that you would, you yeah. know, that's, you know, World War II pi fighter pilots and, and, and mm -hmm. why would they wouldn't even put any criticism in it. And people like Brandy and, and would be like, oh yeah, yeah, this is real. Cause there's a book published on it and they wouldn't lie. And there's been yeah. research on it. This Brandy person, I'm really sad for her, you yeah. know, I would really like to know what she would say, because the next little clip about this memories of past life is, uh, according to my notes here, I would love to hear if she 
feels the same way after getting her degree because she talks about um I don't even know if it's regarding past life or if she's just going on to something else but she talks about having experiences with spirits like a nice grandmother versus a nasty grandmother Ooh, yeah and that right now yeah see? so you want to go there and we'll see oh my gosh yeah I'm really curious because <clears throat> like I said this video was filmed that we're watching right now is 2021 so mm -hmm. September 18th so I don't know if she still believes all this stuff anymore mm -hmm. and or if she would change her direction for some of yeah, this. Yeah, her kids are probably going, Mom, no, already. Okay, stop it with the past life stuff. This is so what <laughs> we as parents and grandparents, what can we do to make sure that the children in our lives grow and thrive in the best way possible? The most important thing that you can do is to listen and validate. Listen and validate. Not only will that foster a bond of trust between you and your child, but your child will also learn that it's okay for them to trust themselves and to trust what they're feeling. Because if you doubt what your child is feeling, they are going to doubt it as well. Okay, so also keep in mind, um, children having these experiences, there's not a lot of other kids their age that may be having the experiences so it could be a lonely and confusing time for them so sit them down and have a conversation with them about it um, if your child is having experiences with the spirit world you can ask questions and try to figure out together what message your child um, your child might be receiving I want to take a brief moment right now and just gently differentiate between two things, okay, two experiences here. So if you have a child and um, she's having experiences like with grandmother and spirit and grandmother feels very loving and nurturing and supportive from where she is in the spirit world, that's one type of experience. If, however, on the other hand, um, your child feels compelled to cause harm to themselves in some way or to cause harm to others because of voices that they are hearing, that's a different type of experience um, that's qualitatively different. And it may mean that some form of treatment may be necessary, okay? And, and if treatment is, is necessary, if that's the case, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. There's nothing to be ashamed of at all. It's just very important that we get our children the love and the help and the support that they need. All children need someone in their lives who loves them unconditionally. And having that unconditional love and support can be a lifeline in a time of need. So in closing, listen to your child without any judgment, okay? create an environment of, of acceptance, of understanding, of caring, and allow them to speak freely to you about their experiences. You can even ask them questions such as, you know, tell me more about your dream or tell me about that funny feeling that you had. And this will encourage them to open up and to talk to you but normalize their experiences and tell them that even though they may feel as if they're the only one who's, who's going through what they're going through, that they are not. There are other children who also have the same experiences and, and put their spiritual abilities in perspective, okay? This is very important. We want to teach them and help them to realize that the spiritually gifted part of themselves, that's one part. There may be other parts as well, such as um, an athletic part, a musical part, um, an artistic part. And we want to encourage them to develop their abilities, all of their abilities, um, um, as much as they can, as much as they can. Now, when it comes to their spiritual abilities, we want to allow the natural expression of their gifts to take any form that it needs to take all right their soul may be calling for them to express their gifts in a very particular way 
What do I mean? I'll give you an example. So um, the young boy that could communicate with animals as you know, he was um, growing up when he was younger, he gets older and he becomes a veterinarian and then he's able to communicate and help the animals that he's treating, okay? Or the young girl that grew up and she was so empathetic and she was so sensitive to, to everything that was around her. She grows up and she becomes a teacher, a phenomenal teacher who's able to nurture the, her children and the children in her class emotionally, mentally, physically in a very profound way. Or the young girl that was drawn to healing when she was younger, she grows up and she becomes a physician. And she's a physician who radiates a healing presence to all of those that she encounters. So that's how it can show up. That's how different ways that gifts can be used. So just love and nurture your children to the best of your ability. And um, always remember, parenting is not always going to be easy. It's going to be challenge, challenging at times. It's going to be difficult. But keep in mind that, that your children chose you as their parent um, because of the lessons that you would impart, because of the things that you would teach them. But also remember that your child can be like a teacher for you as well. There's so much that they can learn, that you can learn from them as well. So be open to that and honor them for who they are. I'll leave you with the words of Khalil. Okay, no, she's not leaving me with anything. There's just, there's so much in here that is common sense, that it's blended into the nonsense yep. to a point where you kind of don't, well, some of it is okay. Mm -hmm. and, the other stuff is a little out there but mm -hmm. like she had good advice like talk freely about your experiences your dreams love and nurture your kids of course get them treatment if they're self-harming yes my concern would be what treatment recommendations she would yeah make. i was wondering about that too is <laughs> as uh having a kid who did self-harm uh the treatment is extremely important and so that one caught my my little radar and the one I think the thing that got me the most in this little thing as I say she had good advice mixed in and then all of a sudden she says your children choose you as their parent because of the lessons that you will impart what the hell does that mean it makes me angry so kids then who are in situations abusive situations so the kid Ooh. is born into an Ooh. abusive situation I by choice it that way yeah and I don't like that at all. And it reminds me a lot of, I had a lot of well-meaning parents say to me that God chose me to be the parent of my kids with Tourette syndrome, OCD, ADHD, et cetera, because he knew that I would be able to handle it and look after these kids. And that, that statement she just made reminded me of that platitude. And I have worked with many parents over the years with Tourette syndrome, OCD, ADHD, who had difficulty handling it because they might be financially unable to get the proper help they need. They might be in a community that's isolated. And that's why we go in virtually. We've been doing that for years to try and help. They, they may uh, have a spouse walk out on them. So they're a single parent suddenly. There's so many situations that people were struggling just to get by day by day. So those statements really make me mad. Yes, I was fortunate. We had the means to get proper help. I mean, it wasn't easy. You know, there were a lot of years with no holidays, but we did it. And in and a place that had accommodation. We, exactly. We had great help, amazing help here. We feel very privileged that that was the case. Not everybody has that. And so those types of statements where your choose, children choose you because of the lessons, because you're so wonderful, or God chose you because you're so amazing in these difficult situations, make me really angry. Can you tell? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, think... I know you well. I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> and, you know, and I didn't pick up on it in the same way you did, which is yeah. really nice the way when we're doing these kinds of uh, interviews with other people, like when I did with Janice and now with you, it, you you you're seeing something that I didn't see and the, mm -hmm. always in the um, 
Yeah, Jenna says, always good to hear Adrian's insights around these issues. Uh, Amelia Thank says, you. get help if dead grandma is telling you to hurt yourself or others. What? <laughs> good point. <laughs> <laughs> No, grandma is telling you to help. It's not the child that's got issues. It's dead grandma thing. <laughs> so you just need to have a psychic come and do an exorcism or something. I don't know. It, yeah, that, that I had. That's yeah, when it would be harmful, right? Thinking, really. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, Randall says, if your child is trying to hurt themselves or others, they need, need help. Hmm, with the F, G, I think. Yeah, same thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Wow. <laughs> so there's a lot of loaded statements in that last little bit for sure so you were saying you were curious about okay so this is 2021 now mm -hmm. she has a master's degree in child yeah. psychology what do you think she just I would, yeah i would really hope that the type of treatment that would be recommended for self-harm would be professional help and not to a psychic to rid you of mean grandma <laughs> so, demon 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 grandma yeah. yeah and i really hope that she wouldn't say your children choose you because i think that's just a strange say, statement to make like what but i guess that if she believes in all this star stuff then maybe she doesn't she she would but i just hope that she understands what good treatments are and I'm not sure if she would be able to mingle the two I think there'd be a lot of cognitive dissonance happening and she would have to choose I don't know what she's planning on doing with this degree maybe she got that degree just to give her more credibility with her healing her Arcturian healing mm -hmm. that could be argument from authority mm, yeah maybe that was what it was maybe people were saying well you have no credentials I don't know what her motivation would be. Maybe it is to get out of this and to actually help people properly. Because she would need, I believe, a PhD in psychology if she really did want to go on and help people as a psychologist in the U.S. So she would still need to get more education. I'm not sure. It would be an interesting question for her. What do you plan to do? What was your hope with getting this degree? Well, I'm hoping it gave her. Is doing well. I just um, don't. I mean, for 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 the amount of money. I mean, for the for the amount of followers she has, mm -hmm. for the very low presence she has on social media, I can't imagine that this woman is doing much with this business right. of mediumship. Her astral projections cost, what, $400 or something like that? But she says it takes hours to prepare one. Well, she said she has a six-month waiting list for that. But it, how long? It, she said it, didn't she say how long it took her to do one? It was yeah, like, like, like five hours time. or something, yeah. It, it yeah. wasn't something that would be like, so yeah, she has a six month waiting list, she says. Yeah, true. But, yeah. Um, you know, is that six? I don't know. I mean, $400, $500 an extra month is good, but mm. especially if it's cash. Yeah. Um, what, what I saw when I was listening to this, let's see if anybody has, um, yeah, Kat says, is it from... Is it from an accredited university? Yes, we think. We don't know what to, we don't know where. We don't know where mm -hmm. she's getting a degree from. Carolyn asks, will this be recorded? I have to leave for an appointment. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, yes, it's going to be on our YouTube channel. And make sure you subscribe to Psychics Explained, which I'm sure you are, Carolyn. And um, yeah, you'll be able to watch this later. And it's also going to be here on YouTube in the exact same spot you're looking at. Okay, so what I saw what, when I heard her at the end there going on about the stuff, I was mm -hmm. thinking of her teenage children. Mm -hmm. And they're, and this sounds like one of those QAnon people who just won't shut up about this stuff. And it's just like, oh, and then this, and then this, oh, you know, past lives. And mm -hmm. I mean, it was just like, I could see them saying, mom, knock it off. Can't you just be a mom? Can't you be just a wonderful human being? You're nurturing, you're fun, you're you're a good mom. Yeah. And, you know, someday you'll be a wonderful grandmother. But can you just lose all this nonsense stuff? You know, like she's gone down yeah. the rabbit hole. I, yeah. I don't know if it's a recent or well, I guess she's always had it. Or maybe she's yeah, because well, she, she said first in the beginning she had always felt this way. Yeah, and but she ignored it until she was a young adult. I think is what she said. 
around the time of her first kid. Retrofitting things back into her yeah. past and mm -hmm. this gut instinct she had. And yep. um, just, oh, yeah, I think her kids are probably like, mom, just, can we, can we, can you just stop this? Because this ain't normal and this ain't right. And no, of course there's no past lives or, I don't know. I don't know. Well, hopefully getting that to get people so, on their own. Yeah. They may say, mom, you know, yeah, that's not the feeling I got. I got this feeling like somebody's just gone into the conspiracy rabbit hole and started believing whatever's told her or whatever, whatever she, you know, come on. This little boy is not a reincarnated mm -hmm. World War II fighter pilot. Give me a break. Well, and after her university degree, she should know how to look things up and to look at counter arguments. I mean, that's what's supposed to happen at university. Out. Yeah. She should. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, let's get to the readings. Hey. How many do we have? There's three of them, I believe. Well, that's right. She does three. Yeah. I've listened to them a couple of times, but like I said, they blended in my mind. All right. So I can't mute this. So I'm going to step away from the computer when I start the reading. So you guys are just going to have to deal with it for a couple of seconds. And Adrian may do the same. So let's go over. Oh, I want to get past this. I want to get away from this because I want to go to the video I have of her that's blurred out. So you guys, I didn't want to show the the um, the um, people who are getting a reading. So I have blurred it. So if you are looking at this and you okay, say, so there's something wrong with my vision, here. it's not you, it is me because I have blurred the uh, the people on it. And I think I'm going to blur everything. Let me just double check to make sure it's all blurred. Yes, it says blurred. Blurred. Sure. Does she actually have people on the screen at any point or is it all? Yep. No, they do pop onto the screen. Oh yeah, there's, there's one in there. Yeah. I'm just fast forwarding you to make sure. I think what I did is I blurred part of, I, I just tried to blur out the person. I think that's what I did. Each per each one of these videos, I've done it differently, depending on how much time I have to deal with it. So, all right, y'all hope you're ready. Sitting down. Let's <laughs> Get your popcorn. Get your popcorn for reals. Oh, I know what I want to do. I don't want to show it on the screen. I want to close the screen and I want to open it up so that, so that people won't be able to look at my desktop and my other stuff. Okay. So as I'm beginning and I'm opening up my back, sorry, you guys, you know, it is as easy as it seems. These things are, when you have multiple screens, things get kind of moved around. Okay. Here we go. First reading. Okay, so as I'm beginning and I'm opening up my mind um, to the spirit world, I know that I get the sense um, that I hear people singing around me, um, and this feels almost as if like I'm I, I'm listening to a a choir. I know that there's a gentleman that's that, that's here with me, and and I feel that he holds a hymnal, and I know that in life it feels to me as if he would have been in the choir, participated like in the in the church choir i feel okay um i know also as well as i'm aware of him here and as he comes closer um i know that i don't feel quite well in my body um it does feel as if i'm dealing with a health health condition or an illness um, before I pass to the spirit world. So I'll just take a pause there and, and take a look at the chat. If anybody's able to understand um, a gentleman that, that would have, it feels to me, been in a choir, I feel that there was singing with him um, that, that I want to talk about. I get that feeling very, very strongly as he's here. Okay, so, so far, yeah, nobody so far. So let me just elaborate a little bit more. Um, okay. If, if choir doesn't make sense, 
would anyone understand a gentleman here? I feel as if there is singing. Um, there is singing with him. He would have been a, okay, Joy says possibly, possibly. Yes. Okay. So Joy, you understand singing for him. You do understand that? And would yes. you also understand, Joy, it feels like an illness or I'm not well before I pass? Um, not quite. That's not sitting quite right. Okay. Then, okay. Let me just make sure that, that there's no one else that understands at all. I feel as if I have a gentleman that's here and I know that I want to talk about singing. What about in a church in the mountains? Um, that would, my brother was a choir master. He is alive, but had poor health. Okay. Um, let me go to Beth. What about in a church in the mountains? Beth, so you would understand that he would have um, sang in church? He would have. He would have sang in church, okay. But it's not, I, I guess I, what I want to say, it's not a, like a church. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, um, but would you understand that I'm not feeling well um, before I pass? Like, it almost feels to me as if there may have been cancer. Would that make sense? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, I, I, I Cindy says yes for me. One second, Beth, just let me check with Cindy. Cindy, would you understand a man in that would have been in a choir that would have also, um, it feels as if I, I have a diagnosis of cancer before I pass. I don't know what CR, um, can you tell me what does CRC, CRC mean? Okay, and, and he was in a choir, Cindy? Cindy, can you unmute for just a second? It might be easier for me then to type. We, <laughs> he, he's really spiritual. So when you talked about that, I could see him being involved. He was involved with the Presbyterian Church. But later in life, when we retired, we both um, we both joined this um, choir through the suburb, uh, South Suburban, you know, our community. Okay. And it was for adults to, okay. to like, okay. you know, okay. and yeah. Okay, so just let me check, um, because I feel like that you and Beth can both understand the information. I feel like I want to talk a man who would have talk about a man who would have been a father. I feel like that there would have been at least two children. <laughs> I only make... have one. I only have one. one. Okay, one. one. Beth said no. Okay, so Cindy, let me do you mind if I work with you for a second? And let's just see if this if this fits. Beth, please continue to listen in. Okay. So um, I, I know that with him, though, like as I'm feeling him here, um, as he comes in closer, um, I, I know I feel that the role of father, since we're going to talk about father, I feel like that that was a very important role within his life. That would that make sense to you? Yes. OK, OK. Um, and, and and I feel almost as if there would have been a daughter. Would that make sense? Yes. A daughter. OK, OK, because I feel like I want to talk about my my daughter or leaving my daughter behind. But let me go back for a second. Let me go back. I, I, I do know with him as he comes in closer, I get the sense of a man where I really want to talk about um, patience like it feels as if I, I i i'm patient with those around me gentle with those around me would that make sense to you oh yeah he was my calm yeah okay yeah yeah okay i feel like that i'm here with you oh okay you said he was your calm so this would be like a partner for you i'm my husband oh your husband okay okay all righty. So, so as I have him here, um, I, I just know that I want to get a, a, a more of the feeling of him here as he comes in. I know that, as I said, he feels like he is a man that was very patient. And I know that I want to say, particularly as father, particularly as father, I know that he was really good with your daughter. You understand? Yes. Um, such a deep sense of understanding, such a deep sense of empathy. You, you understand that? Yes. 
And before he passes, though, I know that the two of you talk about, and I know that he's thinking about, you know, the possibility of life after death. Would you remember those conversations? God, not not a lot. Okay, um, okay. Um, the, the feeling that I get here, though, is that, that when I pass, um, it, it's almost as if I want to come back and leave a sign or let you know that I'm okay. Like, that comes through very, very strongly with him here. Would that make sense to you? Yes, because okay. I have a lot of sightings, animals. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I, I just feel that with him um, here. By the way, um, your husband, do you know if he would have been a baritone? Like I'm just with the singing here, I feel like I want to hear and I want to say baritone. God, I'm not sure. Okay, okay. There's, there's the three levels. I yeah, there was like tenor, baritone, bass. Yeah, okay. It, yeah, he was, yeah, I don't think he was the bass. He was in the baritone. Middle. Okay, so he's a berry. Okay, yeah. All right. That's what, that's what I'm feeling um, as he's here. I know that, that he does talk about, would you understand um, either your daughter, I want to talk about the baby that was born or the baby that's coming, I feel, or the child that's been born within the family. Would that make sense? No. No. Okay. I'm not sure why that's coming through. Let me, let me see if I can work with this piece of information um, just for a minute. Um, would you by any chance in the past, would there have been a miscarriage um, or a child that just was not, that did not make it, that would be in the spirit world? Yes. Okay. So I feel like that with him acknowledging child, he wants you to know that he has this baby there in the spirit world um, with him. Okay. And, and I know that I want to say just as he, he as, as he's here, you talk about how he was your calm. And I know that I want to say, I'm still here with you and I'm still your calm. I'm still there when the waters are a little troubled. If you just, if you just focus on, um, you'll feel me there beside you, like in your tough moments or in hard moments. I do feel that your husband um, draws close to you, especially at nighttime. Um, I, I want to talk about nighttime, like a kiss on the forehead or feeling like that I've been kissed on the forehead when it's when I'm in bed. Would that make sense to you? Uh, not, not, no. No, that doesn't. Okay. Um, so, so I'll just, I'll put that aside, but I know that I feel like that I want to say that that's when he's there. That's when um, he comes forward. Um, so just as I have him here, let me work for a minute um, with, with the message I feel from, uh, or, or to your daughter. Um, I know that it feels to me as if um, your daughter would have felt like that there were some life events or milestones that dad missed out on. You understand that? Um, yeah. Yeah, but He's it feels to me. I'm sorry. He's going to. He's going to. Right. It's it's new. The his passing. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry about that. So sorry about that. Um, your daughter is, is uh, why do I feel like I want to talk about something monumental coming up and I want her to know that I'm going to be there with her, um, that, that I'm right there by her side. I, I feel like that dad comes through and wants to share that with you um, or, or with his daughter as well. I know new that there's job. a new, new job. job. Oh, great. Congratulations to your daughter. Good for her. Good for her. I can't shake the feeling as well of a small dog that's here with me. <laughs> A small dog that would be in spirit that I feel like your husband wants to talk about. I've got the small dog here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like that, that he just wants you to know that the dog is there with him in spirit as well. So yeah. Thank thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you for allowing me to um to, to know your husband and 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 thank you so much for being a good recipient. Thanks. I'll leave you with his love. Thank you. Uh-huh. I'll leave you with his love. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Barnum, 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 Barnum. So people who are listening to this, what you're trying to do, because we're watching this too, this is only like my fourth time listening to this, this uh, one. Is this hot reading, cold reading, mm. or some combination of it? So that I'm really interested in your opinion on the statements. I've got some notes. How about you, Adrian? I'm sure you've got pages of notes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've got Maybe a few start, where uh, I was writing. We'll start at the beginning and we'll, and I'll see what I'm doing. Uh, and I always tell everybody, this is my channel. And I'm saying, what is missing with it should be there. Mm. Think about that too. Not just what she said, but what is she did not say. Go ahead, Adrian, I'll let you start. 
Oh my goodness. I well, I thought it was really interesting how at the start, she start, started with a choir. And then when no one responded, she just went with general, let's broaden this to singing. Oh, sorry if that doesn't apply to anybody. We'll just <laughs> bring up, does anybody sing? Yeah. <laughs> Man uh, who sings in the bathtub, in the shower, <laughs> while he's driving the car, when he's yeah. on the lawn. Have yeah. you ever seen him sing anything? <laughs> Anybody? So the hits are pretty good there. Yeah. Please, and, somebody. And then the other one that I know I picked up on was, and they didn't feel well before passing. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Gee. <laughs> I'm I, guessing that most people don't feel great before no, they're passing. Even if you fall out of a plane. Yeah. You felt fine falling probably. It's the, except scared. It's the hitting the ground part that probably didn't make you feel very good. Even if it was only like a 10 <laughs> seconds, a maybe second, even a yeah. second, even a half a second, I'm sure it didn't feel good. Yeah, exactly. And big misses with the children. Nobody had two children. She says at least two children. Nobody had children. See so how this she feels... got out of it. Did you see how she got yes. out of it? Yes. She said, could there have been a miscarriage yep, or another, I thought, a child that didn't make it? Yeah. That, that's like and everything. I've heard you say that that's what they'll move to. Mm -hmm. If and, and this is classic. It is so classic. This, this would be called cold reading, right? Yes. When they're doing this, they're just searching for searching general him. statements. Yeah. And if she had said, no, I've never had a miscarriage, she would, she'd say, well, think about it or whatever, because... Mm -hmm. Almost all women have had problems with their period. You know, I'm talking to yeah. another woman. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, you have a missed period and, or you have an extra heavier period. I'm sorry if I'm hurting any of the sensibilities of any women out there, but <laughs> if you have an extra heavy period, it might've been because you had a miscarriage Yeah. and you don't know. Nope. So th if the psychic says with any confidence, there was that time that that was a miscarriage Yep. and they'd go. Well, I guess you're the psychic. You should know. Well, and the other statement she made, I think, is pretty Barnum-like. Is uh, you're a fa or he was a father, and it, he had an important role with the daughter. And I thought that was a good guess that it was a daughter. That was the only thing that was that looked like it was um, mm -hmm. more of a hot reading. But I want you to remember that we're looking at chat. Well, I mean, we can't see chat. She yep. gets the chat. Right. You could have easily have said in chat, uh, you know, that applies to me because of, of my daughter or oh. also these are previous readings. She could have been read earlier. And I think she did. Well, this is only the second reading, I think. Okay. I think it was Lillian. And then I think it goes to her. So I think Lillian did pull this woman up and could have gotten this information. Like I said, right. all blurring in my head now, people should go back and look at them in order. If somebody wanted to do that and see, but I, so it seems like a hot reading, but it could have easily have been something that was a guess. I mean, what yeah, are odds? it could have been. And they're really quick at getting out of it, mm -hmm. right? And finding a way and just talking through those types of things. Right. But then there's more Barnum stuff. Like he's a patient man. He's a, in a loving relationship with the daughter. And, and then I, I, I quite like the baritone singing, which <laughs> is the middle range, right? So it's what most oh, men have. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> That's right. Why would why would this dead man be coming back to you to talk to you about how he sang and what? As you say, what's missing? What is, is he not audience? talking about? Is she hearing his voice or is she getting symbols? I've always been interested about that. Each each of these psychics has a different way of describing what it is that they how they know. Like some say, like it's like emojis, and some make yeah. it sound like it's like they're playing. Um, uh 20 questions over on the mm -hmm. other side and they're like doing you know sounds like this you know uh, so she's hearing him she can hear his voice and it um, sounds like a baritone which is but that's not could, singing well i guess she heard him singing or knew something there was because she says at the beginning that she kind of feels the presence so maybe she felt the vibrational energy of a baritone Arturian um, <laughs> he also said another thing she said was was fatherhood important to them mm -hmm. well other than some men who have abandoned their children mm -hmm. or abused their children I would think it's probably pretty important if pretty if he's, good if guess yeah yeah for no. sure and then there's the kiss on the forehead miss 
Ooh, at the that's end. Creepy. Yeah. She's going to lay in bed now, I'm waiting for the kiss, <laughs> waiting for the kiss on the forehead, and waiting for the kiss on the forehead. And, and then a moth will land on her forehead and go, that's it. Spider. <laughs> a spider. <laughs> um, and her daughter, she mm-hmm. missed. What's this about a baby? Well, yeah, this woman that she's looking at, I've blurred her. You can't mm-hmm. see her, but she's probably 60. Mm-hmm. So if she's got a daughter, only one child now, remember, mm-hmm. the daughter would be at childbearing age, 30-ish. Mm-hmm. And all women, it's always going through, you know, when you're when you're in your 20s and 30s, you're thinking, should I have children? Should I not have mm-hmm. children? You're 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 this is a decision that you're that's going through their brains because at a certain level, women can't be having babies naturally anymore. So that is uh, an often discussed thing. And so her having a baby or a baby coming or Mm -hmm. maybe something, what was she saying about the baby? A child eventually, or maybe. Yeah. And she talked about that he's going to miss his daughter's milestones. That and was interesting. That, how old did she think this daughter was well i think milestones are more of a child thing aren't they th- i think we think of it that way but i was guessing she was talking about marriage babies that whole thing like it could cover graduation. any of that Gra- yeah a new job graduation from university all those things would be considered milestones in somebody's life that's true but it was a huge miss as far as i'm concerned because the father just died and hadn't missed any milestones because he just died. And she just, <laughs> and she didn't notice that. She didn't. I mean, what are we talking, weeks, days, months? Yeah. And, and basically the, the woman said, well, not yet, but my, my daughter just got a new job. So. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. So then, oh, I got a hit. I didn't notice that. <laughs> I got didn't a hit. Mention that. He's not really paying attention over there. And then the small dog being dead with the husband. I'm like, I, I couldn't understand, even though this is the third or fourth time I've heard this. What did she say about the dog? She says something about a small dog and she gets all excited. Because it was a hit. Because oh, she, she got a hit did with she say the something? small. Yeah, she said something. Oh, I, I can't remember what it was. Like something about a small dog. I, I sense a small dog. And she goes, oh, yeah, the dog died. Oh, and well, the, yes, yeah, she, she the dog's with your husband, but she, I believe I'm, I may be wrong with this, but I thought that the sitter gave that information away that the dog died. Uh, yeah, it was unclear. It was like a yeah. thing. She said, I'm seeing a small dog. And then the, then Cindy here gets yeah. all excited. Yeah. And I think Cindy did say, it sort of sounded like she said the dog died. And then, the, mm-hmm. and then Brandy says, yeah, cause that's what he's saying. The dog is here with him. Yeah. So she's just repeating back what the the lady was saying, what Cindy was saying. Mm -hmm. So I just have in my notes, oh my. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay. So here's, here's what I, you got everything I said, except that I added that this, this sitter is very motivated. Mm. Her her husband's recently died. She's been here. It's already been, this is the second hour. Mm -hmm. She's in the second hour. So she'll stay the whole time. She's here all four hours. And uh, she's she's pulled on screen multiple times. She's motivated. She over explains. So even though the mediums will say, just tell me yes or no. Yeah. All all the sitters, all yeah. of them yeah. have to tell you more. They go on and say. Everyone likes to talk. Oh, my gosh. As you and I know. <laughs> yeah, well, we never do that. But, <laughs> so she says, oh, yes, because we see we went to this church or we went to this choir and then we were doing this and mm-hmm. da, 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 and then all this happened bah, 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 bah. so th- they over explain it every time they over explain they're validating the whatever it is the psychic has said mm-hmm. and not letting the psychic have their you know explain and they're just trying to make it fit yeah called a mot- i call i am coining this phrase motivated sitter yeah. and um makes sense is, so so the whole thing is what is missing so here at the beginning, why are we playing this game? There's like 30 people in this room, the Zoom room, maybe 30 people. And two people hit out of these 30 people, which is saying how general it is, the statement she's making, that it could have applied to this person or could have applied to this person. And then when she decided on Cindy, I'm going to go with Cindy. Let's see if we can make this fit. 
<laughs> I'm going to try. Has he ever sung before? Did you ever have a dog? Well, that's what Kat's a dog? Kat actually says that in the chat. She says he, she's stuck on the fact that she was looking for someone who could relate to someone who didn't feel well before they died and who sang. Seriously? How that is as low as the bar, you know, how low can the bar go? Basically. I don't see that in the chat. Why am I not seeing that? I was delayed a little while back because you were reading stuff off the chat and I didn't have it. Mine's come just come up. Maybe refresh it. And Janice says she thinks it's cold reading. Yeah, I'm not seeing any of those. <laughs> oh, so, there it is. And Kat says this isn't hot or cold reading. This is just throwing out crap and not much stuck. <laughs> I did what was missing, missing? Out important events yeah there they are all of a sudden yeah. wow that's interesting the chat had ended at the um at the last post that Janice had put up with the about the university events. yeah and nothing else yeah I'm thinking cold reading yeah you're this is cold reading a dead person missing out this is not hard or cold just throwing out crap and not much stuck what was missing everything even entertainment <laughs> 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 um so why do they have to do this? Why do they have to, why do they play this game where they're, we're going back and forth? Could it be you? Could it be her? Cause, cause it could all be cleared up by just giving people names. She mm -hmm. could come in and Brandy could say, I'm getting a man who recently died of colon cancer. And um, he wanted to be at home with his, with his family, but he couldn't be, he had to go into the hospital and mm -hmm. he had hospice for a very long time. His name is Joseph Joe but jangled and but don't they say jangled. don't they say that but that's not how it works isn't that their always answer <laughs> doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way mm. or they say i got names mm. or yeah I'm starting with jay or they say i'm not very good at getting names oh i get that one a lot too i wonder why you're not very good at getting names because you're not hot reading and 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 you know <laughs> They could say, and I haven't heard them say this yet, you know, that's a privacy thing. We don't want to say their names, but you could give enough information that it would be clear. Very clear. This, this yeah. is an evidential medium, I think, right? She says she mm -hmm. gives evidence mm -hmm. um, that she could give uh, uh, the last four digits of her phone number, last mm -hmm. four digits of social security, or um, even a holiday specifics, specific holidays you went on two years ago or a year ago or six months ago. There's so much information yeah. you could give that wouldn't be super private. Yeah. That would be, now I know exactly. So she would go, why waste time? Let's get mm -hmm. right to the reading where the guy is, he's he's dying to get through to you, honey. He just died recently and he is yeah. trying to tell you and he wants to make sure you know it's him. And something by, not on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> something not on Facebook. Here's my address when I grew up. This is, this is my, yeah. this is my license plate of my first car um uh just you know we were thinking of doing this right before i died but we didn't get a chance to do this or yeah. we were planning be a vacation a good one. here or i was a stamp collector and i specialized mm -hmm. in stamps from belgium i don't know just something more than i mean she didn't he didn't say his name his parents' names or his daughter's name. Mm -hmm. So why did, did he or the dog's CD? name? Did he have a nickname? Did he call her CC mm -hmm. or was there a nickname he could have used that he didn't allude to it? Yep. She says that she knows what was it she said? She knows that he's coming through. Oh yeah, she says, oh, okay. Now people listening, you might you might catch this because I wasn't sure, even though I've heard this a few times. Cindy, I thought kind of alluded to the fact that this was her husband and mm -hmm. that they had, she, she said it, but then Brandy comes in and says, Oh, you said he was your, your, your calm. This is your husband. And yeah. She was like, surprised. Yeah. She's like, yeah. But I thought she kind of already, maybe, maybe if Cindy didn't say, this is my husband coming through, but she had alluded to it being mm -hmm. her husband. And then Brandy acts all surprised. Mm -hmm. so either Brandy asks, acts surprised on purpose, or she really wasn't paying that good of attention because yeah. she's not that practice. She's not been doing this that long. And then Cindy says, oh, I know it's real because there was, I have animal sightings, but what yeah. the hell does that mean? I have animal sightings. I see animals too. Am I seeing her husband? Yeah. 
Yeah. Or a relative. A lot of people think that butterflies, I think, are common. Cardinals. Birds. Yeah. Different kinds of birds. Looking for some animals, see if there's any dead yeah. in my backyard. It's be fun. We have squirrels. Maybe it's no, my grandma. I have one squirrel who's visited me three times, and that's it. But it could be my, it could be my grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> I've always just thought of it as a squirrel, but I hadn't really thought of it before, but maybe it is my grandfather. Well, so that, that grandmother back. squirrel sure likes to bug my dog, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> always teasing your dog. But yeah, that makes, it makes no sense, the sign stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. It, we, uh-oh, something's, something's happening. Uh-oh. What's happening? On the live feed, waiting for live video signal. The broadcast uh-oh, did it, did we signal. lose it? It says it's loading. Let's see mm-hmm. what happens real quick. Can you see it on your phone? Uh, it's frozen on the phone. But I got a cat mag while your grandfather was nuts, right? La- LOL. <laughs> there we are. I'm going to mute it again. I just, I just. Um, oh, it just froze again. I think it's getting to the point where it's freezing. Well. Huh? Frozen. No, we're talking. I can see it. Now it's frozen. Nice. No, nope, now it's going again. Weird. Can you guys, are you guys still seeing this? Yeah, right in the chat. Because mine's frozen. I think I'm going to leave it, leave and come back in. If I can find it again. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look like it's running because I can't. It says, um, can't get back in. Huh. Are you getting anyone saying that it's running or did it drop? And looks like I'm looking at it right now and I can see us moving around on the Facebook page. Okay. Let me see if, oh, okay, there we go. And it, and oh, it, it says, cat says froze twice, but you're okay now. Oh, my yeah, gosh. I've got it. Mine, it's okay on mine now, too. I had to channel and then all the energy through. It's Maybe that Arcturian it, energy, I'm telling you. We're creating too much energy. Yeah, too much Arcturian en- energy. No, I can't see cat's response. So let me refresh it and see what happens because this is weird. Facebook. Is trying to get us. Oh, okay. So Janice just says it dropped, but I can see you and hear you. Okay. So it sounds like it's back yeah, up. I see that? And somehow or other, I've got closed captioning happening now. Let me turn. This <laughs> I don't need to hear myself or see myself's words speaking on my screen. That is annoying. Okay, so I think we're back. Okay, perfect. So we should go on to reading too. Yeah. Okay, cold reading. We're definitely having some technical glitches and I am blaming it on the Arcturians. (laughs) Um, So we're going to go on to reading too? Yeah, I, I was just thinking I don't see anything else that I forgot. Okay, I don't have anything else to add either. Okay, here we go. So we're going to say goodbye to Cindy. Who's next? What's the person's name? Do you have it written down? I think I, I thought I did. Samantha. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to give a little background for that one? Um, no. Let's okay. just let's just go. Sounds good. Let's just go with that. Okay, just one moment. I should say I do like the way she she has to think about it. I I find that much more realistic, where she has to like concentrate. Yeah. Well, most psychics. I do feel um, my next communicator is here, and 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 I know that this is a young lady. 
Um, this is a young lady. I know that she would have not had the chance to, to grow older, it feels to me. I know definitely that there are some issues with addiction. Um, it even feels as if there could have been like an accidental overdose here, but I know that I get the feeling of, of addiction with her. And, and, and I know that um, there's just this struggle and it seems as if almost um, for, for, for quite a few years, she deals with this and it's, and it's like, um, um, I, I go for a while and I'm okay. And then there's a relapse and, and then I go for a while and I'm okay. And then there's a relapse. It's just what I feel with her here. And I know that she would have passed young. So I'll, I'll check and see if there's anyone who understands who this young lady might be. If she might belong to you or you might know her. And I know it just feels as if, you, you know, with her here, I struggle quite a bit in life. Um, I, I know that there's some really tough moments for me. And I know that there's an addiction issue that, that she would have um, struggled with as she's here. Does anybody understand? Somebody. <laughs> so let me just work with this information um, a little bit here. So if nobody's able to understand the information as I have presented it, let me just see if anybody understands young lady who would have had an issue with addiction. Um, I'm not sure if there would have been an overdose, so we can just step away from that particular piece, but a young lady who would have struggled with addiction, I know. I know someone who died in her 30s from it. Okay. It's me too. Okay. Um, but she isn't on the call. Okay. Um, so Samantha knows someone who died in her 30s from it. Um, and, and Samantha, this feels almost like an accidental overdose. Samantha, are you able to unmute yourself, please? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Hi, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? Good. All right. So you understand that I feel uh, like there's like this issue of I, I deal with this and then, you know, I'm fine for a while and there's a relapse and it's almost like a, a, a cycle. Would, would that yes. make sense to you? Okay. He okay. was on heroin. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I know that it also feels, would you understand that she would have had children or left behind a child? She left, yeah, she left behind a son. Okay, she left behind a son. I know that there's a feeling that I'm mother. Um, I, I do have to tell you, so this would be a friend to you, would that be correct? Um, it was almost like my mom, my mom's, it wasn't her real daughter, but she took her in like that she was her daughter. Oh, okay, she was okay. Family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. She was a few years older than me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, I just know that like, as she's here with me, I really want to talk about, I want to go back and I want to talk about turmoil um, from how I grew up. And there was some trauma and in, 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 in the things that I was dealing with, would that make sense to you? Yes. And, and, and I was just never really quite able to shake it or to let a lot of that go. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, it, it also feels as well as she's here that I'm dealing really almost with um, shake depression, um, depression that I really try to keep hidden at times. You understand? Yeah. And, you know, another thing I always thought, too, that she may have been had manic. Yeah. 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 It, it almost feels to me as if she was trying to self-medicate in some way, you mm -hmm. know? Um, yeah. And, and, and there was this need almost to numb some of these painful memories or some of these things that I had been through. Would that make sense to you with mm -hmm. her? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, know, I just know that I feel her here. Would there be anybody by the name of Crystal that was uh, connected to her? Um, you know, she has quite a few sisters. I'll ask my okay. mother. My mother okay. might know of a friend or that. Okay. 
and I'll get okay. back on the chat in just a minute after I'll ask her. Okay, okay. Um, I, I know that I want to talk about, though, at times um, she tells me that it was really hard for her to be honest or truthful. Would you understand that? Yes. It, it just seems as if I feel like I'm a disappointment to people and, and I'm tired of disappointing people. So a lot of times I just keep things hidden or I bend the truth a little. You understand that? Yeah, and I think my mom understood that a lot, and I think that's why she came to her a lot, because she accepted. Yeah, accepted yeah, that. yeah. Um, would you also understand that at some point, though, it feels to me as if um, almost that she's afraid of disappointing your mom, like like her and your mom, like um, sh she makes me feel that there was a soul bond, a soul connection, that she was seen for who she truly was without judgment. You understand that? Yeah. And, and it's almost like, you know, I, I loved that lady. She loved me unconditionally. And that was the one thing that I needed. And I did not want to disappoint her. You understand? Yeah. And my mom was so sad when she went because yeah. she hadn't seen her in a while. And she was becoming very secretive. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I feel. Um, that's what I feel as she's here. I know that she does acknowledge her son, but I feel like a biological member of her family would have the son. Would that be correct? Y yes. I think her mother and father are raised. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she talks about her son. I know that she talks about her son being raised, um, but, but I know that there's a lot of sadness for not being here and being able to be the mother that he needed. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I really feel that the message here today or the reason that she comes through is really um, for your mother. She wants your mother to know that where she is in spirit, where I am in the spirit world, I'm healthy and I'm happy and I'm whole and I'm able to see things and think of things and, and perceive things in a different way than I was when I was physically alive. OK, mm -hmm. I know that she wants your mother to know that and she wants to say to your mother, thank you. Thank you for all of the unconditional love and the support that you gave me. Thank you for giving me a home and putting a roof over my head. That's what I really, really needed. And you were there for me. You understand? Yeah. And I, I just have a, a quick question. At the end, when she was on drugs, she had gotten cancer too. Hmm. And I wondered if it was, we never really knew what happened when she passed, but we thought it was a mixture of both things, being sick with that. And yeah. What, what I'm really feeling strongly, um, I, I keep getting the sensation, I have a certain sensation that I get when there's drug use and drug use that, that potentially like led to the passing or led to her passing. So even though I don't have, you know, hard, fast proof, I, I, I really feel just from the way that, that what, what she's communicating to me as she comes in, that it has to do with substances, I, I would say. Maybe she just did yeah. that because the pain of what she was yeah. going to do and did yeah. it at the end. Okay. Yeah. But, you, you know, she comes in and thank you so much for um, for validating her. Thank you for for receiving her messages. And please let your mom know um, that, that that she's she's doing well in the spirit world. And a thank you again for everything that she did. You're welcome. Thank you, Samantha. I just want you to know she's doing well in the spirit world. She's learning and except she's extremely upset that she doesn't have her child anymore. Yeah. I am not seeing chat. It comes up, so yeah. I, it's there's new chat because I have to keep refreshing it. But yeah. every time I refresh it, then it keeps having that same thing. Is there? Chat yeah. So there? I see something from uh, Randall that said, "Cat, uh, oh, this, oh, this is basic cold reading. They're what they call Barnum statements. Absolutely." Okay. No, there's stuff after that. Oh, is there uh, stuff after Lydia that? Says, Even though it's not hard, fast proof, in quotes. <laughs> And then ah. Kat says addiction is usually usually cyclical. 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 <laughs> usually stems from trauma abuse. She would have learned that in Psych 101. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know if she's had Psych already yet. Well, I, and that's exactly right. All everything she says about drug addiction is pretty common knowledge, but maybe not to everybody. I don't know. Yeah, she it's, was. It was pretty typical. It was like stereotypical. Uh, yeah. the thing she was saying is if yeah. it's typical of probably everybody who's exactly addicted. dealing with hidden depression, self-medicating. Yeah. No, <laughs> exactly. wanting to do better. Yeah. Uh, lying. Uh, Mit she's hiding things from people. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, then Samantha mentions cancer at the end, which was not brought up by yeah. 
I wrote that down. Well, can I the ask? Medium. Was there can and we we found out she had cancer too? And then she kind of Samantha makes the excuse. Well, maybe she's just self medicating. Yeah. No. Well, self medicating for the depression though, not for oh, like likely. Yeah. That's that's what she says. It's self medication for depression and uh, other another uh, mental illness. But yeah, you're going to be depressed if you have cancer. It's probably hand in hand. So it's still, I guess, would be considered a hit by the sitter, whatever. by Samantha. Yeah. Um, but the fact that it was Samantha who brought it up, I thought was really. Yeah, I guess Brandy really telling. noticed that cancer. Um, yeah. I thought it was interesting at the very, very beginning that here she is again playing that game. Who is it out there? Who is somebody have a woman in her 30s who died of a, addiction? Yeah. Anybody? And an overdose, and then she had to backtrack. An overdose? Okay, I'll take out the overdose. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so she died of had cancer. Anybody who's died? Anybody out there who's died? Yeah. <laughs> it just gets into, you know, how broad it is. And the person yeah. had to take this as somebody who's not even a relative, mm -hmm. not somebody she loved. Mm -hmm. It is not a loved one or any of that. It is almost a stranger to her, but her mm -hmm. mother's... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, prodigy who was there for a period of time who was older than samantha so yeah. it's it's like kind of odd that this would have come through i mean yeah. why this i noticed that she says i feel i feel mm -hmm. uh, brandy's constantly feeling things yeah i'm gonna try refreshing this again and see if I, there's more comments because i can't see um if anything's new yeah they're very slow coming through aren't they yeah, nothing's new. Okay, well, I wasn't sure. Go on to the next one. No, I, I wanted oh. to mention a, just a couple things. Sure. Uh, I felt like there was a child left behind. Mm. Okay, so that was a hit. She didn't say what the child's name was. No, was or sex. Girl. Nothing, except yeah. that we, again, we don't have access to the chat room. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what might have been said in chat that um, mm -hmm. was in there. Plus, um, a woman who's had... Again, this is stereotype. Mm -hmm. uh, she's in her 30s. She's got a drug um, problems, drug addictions. It's not uncommon for them to have a child mm -hmm. that is left to somebody else to care for. That's true. Apparently. Yeah. I mean, there's no mention of the father. Where's the father in all this? Why don't we have any of that in there anywhere? So leaving a child behind. And then Samantha says, I think the mother. Uh, the the parents are caring for the child yes she doesn't know so it's validating it and then who yeah. is crystal yeah i don't know it could be a sister well yeah it could be or could yeah. be just a name she pulled out of her you know what yeah um i i noticed that brandy when she starts going she starts going mm -hmm. and she's like all right okay i'm so here's what she's trying to tell you and she just does it like just platitude platitude mm -hmm. platitude platitude mm -hmm. So, um, and I, yeah, I thought it was interesting when she said at the end, I am, I am, or she's, this woman is coming through for Samantha's mother. And I'm thinking, okay, let's make this fit now. <laughs> yeah. Was, she, she does a lot of that. Um, yeah. In cancer too. Um, yeah. So, so I'm going to say that Samantha is um, somebody who gave us these videos. Mm -hmm. So Samantha is the woman that I interviewed. Uh, she's a grief counselor. And I interviewed her on on my channel, Psychic Explained. You can you can watch and see her video. She still believes in mediumship, but she does not believe in Thomas John anymore. She did for a long time, but she felt like uh, she started to understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. And and she explains her reasons on the um, the video that I have. So she gave me these readings, and she said that they were cringe worthy, very cringy. So even though you just heard Samantha validate these things mm -hmm. in retrospect, now that Samantha knows a lot more about mediumship, she, she's an intelligent woman. She's educated and she's a professional, a professional grief counselor, by the way. Um, she realizes that this was just reaching cold reading. So she did knows she, now. Did she think that this reading was good at the time? And it's only in retrospect that she looks back at the recording. Or did she actually think it was pretty cringy at the time? 
I think I'd have to rewatch it, but I mm. think, and she, I know she's watching this video. Hi, Samantha. Oh, hi, Samantha. Uh, <laughs> I know that, um, and she's like, oh gosh, when she sees me put one of these videos up, she tells me, I don't know if I should watch that. Am I going to be really embarrassed? It is. Uh, she says, uh, she yeah. said, she said to me that I think at the time she kind of thought it was okay, that it was probably a, a, a valid, a good, yeah. but it's just it's in retrospect that now that she mm -hmm. knows more and she's had some time to think about it, she realizes that, no, these weren't all that really all that accurate. And, um, and when you're in the spotlight, you don't think as clearly yeah. as, you know, like in retrospect, you think about what did you say, et cetera, et cetera. So it's totally understandable. Yeah. yeah. You're caught up in the emotion of it. Absolutely. Yeah. You're sitting here, you're, you're totally motivated. Oh, mm -hmm. and I should mention that uh, Samantha was given this ticket. It was a free ticket given to her oh, by this Thomas is Tarn. The free ticket she was talking about in your interview. Interesting. Yeah. Ah. So I, I just uploaded a video. It's on my channel. It's the very last one that Thomas John, because yeah. in, in a couple, two or three hours, Thomas John does readings mm -hmm. and he reads Samantha. And I was like, well, it's not hard when you know her, you've yeah. done readings for her previously, <laughs> you know, she's going to be here and you have open access to her Facebook page. So Samantha will get a reading for him. Samantha gets a reading from several of these mediums. And so oh, interesting. Uh, the one that came before Lillian, yeah, she, she read for Samantha, um, this crystal, and I don't think crystal came through, but this woman, did we ever get her name? 30 year old, 30 year old woman who's addicted to, I don't know her name. No, we didn't get a name, no. Why didn't we get her name? <laughs> What's missing? Huh? That's kind of like the first thing you would say, right? I yeah, have yeah. a woman named Elizabeth who's coming through, who's in her 30s. Uh, yeah. She was in her 30s. When she, I, yeah. yeah, you're right. I didn't write yeah. that down. No, just the name Crystal doesn't mean anything to you. And there was, she didn't know. And, but and, thanks to Samantha for sending these because I would never have known about Arcturian healing if she hadn't sent these to you. I'm so much wiser now. <laughs> Uh, yeah so samantha gave yeah these to me. it's she pretty says, awesome she says i don't know if i still have these and they are really cringy so she said please forgive me for um i think that's what she said you know i was i i yeah she says i'm not that i didn't think that but she does still believe in mediumship yeah we get along fine. great she's yeah a, she's a wonderful she person seems lovely she's very open to this um eventually mm -hmm. maybe she'll change her mind because she's watching all these videos i don't know it's fine i yeah. have i have a lot of religious people in my life and mm -hmm. they're okay with me and i'm okay me with too them. yeah um, yeah janice did you see janice's comment i just refreshed it oh i can see it is okay janice boyton says i can yeah. see it seeming okay in the moment but when you go home it might not sound as solid as you thought yeah absolutely yeah and that's... also these people so they had this reading. They received the recording afterwards. So she didn't record this. <clears throat> Thomas John and his people give you the reading afterwards. Right. The next day. They give you this footage. So a lot of them don't re-listen re to it. I think Samantha <laughs> went back and re-listened to it and said, oh. Good God. for her. But you're Good not going to go back and a lot of them aren't going to re-listen. No. We're going to just say, oh, so and so came right through and it was amazing. And my life is changing. You know, they're going to just say that. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, Lee was talking about crystal meth being maybe the drug. And I think they I, said heroin in the. Yeah. She said right off, she's addicted to heroin. heroin. And you know what? Yeah. That's good, Lee. I was going to mention that too, because the word crystal could be. Oh, a drug. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I wonder if that's say, where she was she going. Say, is the drug uh, does crystal mean anything to you, or yeah. did she say did the name crystal? I, I wrote in my notes name crystal, but that may have been just me writing down, right? So it may not. Maybe it was just does crystal, but oh, that's that's really cleverly. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. That's very boy brandy. Come on now. So we got one <laughs> more reading. Uh, it's eight minutes long. I hope you guys yep. can handle it. Good, Adrian. Yeah, we're ready to How's go. How's your dog doing over there? Still sleeping. sleeping. I'm not moving because she's still sleeping. So it's good. Wow, that's amazing. Tired her out. 
I'm shocked that my cats aren't like scratching the door. I think it's because it's beautiful outside and they're out laying in the sunshine. They're leaving me alone, which is fine. Okay, so let's see how far we can get through this. It's one o'clock my time. 10, 11, 12. When, we've been here three hours. I know. It's just shock. Okay, so let's see if we can get through this eight minute reading <laughs> in the next hour. <laughs> telling you to really understand these things you have to it's really important to watch more than one and it's, mm -hmm. it's excruciating and i'm so glad you're here to help me out and janice was here to help me out the other day because it's, it's it's fascinating to me because it's a new world again it's something that it's i had no idea existed okay here she goes okay so let's see we have time for another um communicator so give me just a moment let me move my mind back to never see that word before let's see who's here okay so this is the last reading you guys okay i i know that with my next communicator i feel like i want to talk about hockey Okay, I feel like that I've got a young man here, either he would have played hockey at some point in his life, or there's a, a, a love of hockey, um, I, I feel as he comes in here. Um, and um, this this feels to me as if it could be an automobile accident. Um, it could have been a car accident that would have taken him to the spirit world. So um, just check and see if anybody understands a young man loved hockey or would have played hockey, um, I feel. I know that 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 as he's here and as I'm blending with him, like it, it feels like I have on a hockey jersey, <laughs> um, and and I know that there's this love for the sport there. And if you understand, young man in spirit that would have loved hockey or would have played hockey, but not um, not the car accident, let me know that as well. He comes across as really, um, I know that this would have been a handsome young man. <laughs> I mean, he would have been a good looking kid, I feel like I want to say. Hi, Brandy, this is Beth. Hi, Beth. Oh, you can understand? Yes, all of it. Oh, wow. Okay, so you can understand the young man, hockey and the car accident, okay? Um, and, and and I know that I, as I'm sensing him here, so this would be son for you, would that, would that be correct? No, but your no. nephew. Yes. Nephew, okay, because nephew feels a lot like son um, sometimes, okay. So I, I know that like as he's here, wow, he's made, um, I love the evidence that he gave me. It was very specific. Um, I, I know that I get the feeling of the hockey jersey. So I know that I want to talk about it. I, I used to like to wear hockey jerseys. You understand that. Okay. And 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 I know also as well um, that he would have played. Would that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. I feel that. I don't know why I want to talk about the Red Wings. Was he a Red Wings fan? Yes. Okay. You know, I lived in Detroit for a little while, so I had that, that, that symbol there in my head, and he just popped it right in there, the Red Wings. Um, I, and, and, and the thing about him is, um, as he's here with me, I want to talk about this, this, this kid, um, because I, I know that he would have been quite handsome, and it's almost as if he knew he was quite handsome. <laughs> you understand that? <laughs> Um, um, quite pleasant. And I feel that others around him, they really liked him. Uh, the thing about him, um, as he's coming forward, there seems to be so much hope and promise and ambition with him. Would you understand that? Yes. But it's almost like, you know, I have dreams of going off to college and I feel like that I want to play at some point. You know, I even think about talk about playing professionally at some point. That's how he feels with me here. Like there's so much in life that I want to do and, and, and I look forward to it. You understand? Yes. And what a sense of humor. What a sense of humor um, he has. Would you remember that about him as well? It does. And, and I feel as if he would have left siblings behind, though, too, because I feel like I want to talk about or acknowledge my siblings. Would that make sense? He didn't 
No. Okay. So there's no siblings. Would you understand then? Um, it feels as if there's a younger male in the family. Um, this could be cousin or somebody else, but I feel like I want to acknowledge the younger male that also would have been there. Yeah. Or you understand so, that part. When you say been there. Well, that would have been a part of his life. Yes, there's a okay. Few okay okay i just feel like i want to acknowledge them as as well um I, I know that there's the there's the sensation or the feeling here of i i know that this was a quick passing um i i i do know as well though that it feels would you understand um it almost feels as if at some point uh I want to talk about being in the hospital or on life support. Would that make any sense at all? Yes, he was. Okay. And and, and there would have been conversations, though, about yes. whether we're go going to donate organs. You understand that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He makes me aware of that. I know that mom, I know that his mom, I know that I feel mom right beside me. And I know that I, that I feel mom touching my head. And I, and I know that mom is saying so many things to me. She's telling me how much she loves me. Um, and, 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 um, oh, I, I just, I, I feel so much love and gratitude for my mother and for my family members that were there. There was actually someone, I feel like that this would be mom that said and held his hand um, while he was in the hospital. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Okay. I do feel as if there would have been organ donation. Would, would that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. I know that, um, I know that, <laughs> Oh, wow. So, so as he's here, I know that there's the feeling here of, wow, isn't that cool? You know, like a part of me was able to help somebody else or a part of me still goes on. And, and, and I know that he thanks mom and dad for everything that they did and for how they were with him there at the end. Um, I know as well, he talks about, it feels like at home with mom, that there would be like this, I want to talk about a picture of me that's framed and it's in a really prominent place, like where my mom sees it every day, like at home. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, she never passes by without acknowledging me. And I know that she always talks to me. Um, and, and, and I want her to know that in those moments when she passes by um, and, and, and talks to me, that I'm there with her in spirit. My soul is there with her in those very moments. I know mom as well. Um, he, he talks about mom feeling guilty or carrying some guilt and in some way feeling like, I wish that there was something else that I could have done differently. Would that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay. And, and and I know that he just wants to say, please tell my mom, please tell my mom that I don't want her to feel guilty for anything. Please tell my mom that there was nothing differently that she could have done. But I want her to know that from where I am in spirit, in the spirit world, I'm I, I'm healthy and I'm whole. And it almost gets, he almost gives me the feeling of being with grandfather I want to talk about in the spirit world. So I know that he would have a grandfather that would be in spirit, correct? Yes. And it's like, I want to talk about grandfather was, you know, the one that greeted me when I came to heaven and I'm here with him now. So I, 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 I will allow him to step back and I'll leave you with his love. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. Let him know that I will tell his Thank mom. You. Thank you. Okay. So we've come to the end. Oh, yes, we have. I'm so glad to be done. I've, I've heard this three or four times. I'm so glad this is the saddest one because yeah. Beth is really emotional. Yeah. It's just yeah. really sad. Um, she's, she, she's taking this to heart and mm -hmm. I, I feel really bad for her. Your thoughts. Yeah. Same thing. It was very emotional. And again, though, there were a lot of general statements such as, Others liked him. He had promise and ambition, Funny. going to college, he wanted to play professional hockey. He had a sense of humor. Um, those are all pretty standard right, comments that would be true. And the other thing was mom held his hand when he was in the hospital. Well, no yeah. No kidding. She no kidding. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like I, I just can't imagine that. It would be just so horrific. So awful. And the whole organ donation thing, very, very difficult. She said it twice. Did you yeah. notice that? She says, yeah. mom held my hand in the hospital. There was a yeah. discussion of organ donation. 
and then she's like yes there was and then a little bit later she he says um i see there was a organ donated yeah that was very cool what if yeah, haunt, that, does he, is he haunting the organ donated per, the person yeah. who donated the organ to him? And why did he say what organ? Or if there's multiple? Yeah, but probably. It, well, it depends on, I guess, if there was but damage to them. So. Yeah. And the other one that, like, he, she, mom has a picture of me framed where mom can see me every day. Well, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> they make these things called picture frames, they go on walls. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I guess that. Grieving can do one of two things, remove all the pictures or you just can't let go of the pictures. And I would guess that most people want the pictures. That's their memory. It's their only child. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it was also interesting that at the beginning, it was a big mess because um, she said it was a son. Right. Yeah. Beth was very emotional. And she says, it was your son. No. Oh, your mm-hmm. nephew. Oh, mm-hmm. well, I think of nephews as sons. They come yeah, nephew country. feels a lot like the son. And I put, put here smooth. Yeah, very smooth. <laughs> um, keeping in mind, we don't know what was in the chat. So whenever mm-hmm. whenever, whenever Brandy's saying, I'm getting a person who's got a, who died, a young man who died in an automobile, mm-hmm. uh, automobile accident, who played hockey, loved hockey, and um, yeah. she's waiting for somebody to respond, easily somebody could have said, I can, um, Beth could have said, I can, that's mine. I can, you know, that was my mm-hmm. nephew. Right. And he died in a car accident when he was 15 or 25 yeah. or whatever. But uh, she didn't know that. I think she, that was a guess. Yeah. Well, she might've forgotten. Yeah. She, yeah, she could have forgotten. And that one thing love. that I think was the hot read is the Red Wings, because there's a lot of teams in the National Hockey League. Well, I was hoping that we would cover that whenever you, the, you know, I don't know anything about hot wings or hot wing, <laughs> hot red. The Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> I don't know nothing about hockey. I know very little about sports at all, but I know you're Canadian, so you're like, like fluent in in hockey. I'm fluent in hockey. Yes, I am. That's the thing. So I was wondering about that too. Yeah. Um, and I actually rewound the video to see if there was anything in the background that would give that ask, away. Because yeah. you nothing. saw the unblurred ver- version. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find anything. And she that was would wearing get that a shirt away. that was hot, hot red wings. No, nope, not that I could see. I couldn't see any recognition of the the logo. There was nothing that I could find. So Did she knows she's from Detroit. I don't know. And if she knew that, then she might. And because Brandy said she used to live in Detroit, she would be aware aware of the Detroit Red Wings. So were they a big team in Detroit? Would they be the? Oh, they're the t- team? the team, and yeah, they're they've been around. In fact, I think they were. They've been around longer than a lot of these teams, like the Las Vegas Knights who won the Stanley Cup this year. They were a relatively new team. Detroit Red Wings, they go back. They might have even been one of the original, but I'm not 100% sure of that. So, so they, they have a said, long history. I'm from Detroit. I'm into mm-hmm. hockey. It yeah. would automatically be assumed it would be these Red Wings, not Correct. some other. Yeah. Group. Yeah. So she knew that she was from Detroit. That would be a pretty, pretty obvious choice of a hockey team. Right. Okay. So the woman already said, so Brandy says, I'm looking for somebody who was really into hockey, a young man who died in a car accident. Mm -hmm. So Beth comes on and says, all of those relate to my, to me. Mm -hmm. And she says, yes. Now, if she knows she's into hockey and it's a young man Mm -hmm. and she's in Detroit, Mm -hmm. she's going to pick this group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then that kind of, it's so somewhere in there, somebody said something about being from Detroit in chat. In yeah. chat, oftentimes people say, "Hi, I'm from I'm from somewhere." They could right. easily have said, "Hi, I'm from Michigan." Oh, right. really? Where are you at? I'm in Detroit. She could have seen that. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. and the fact that Brandy recognized or admitted to having lived there, then so she I would think that's probably where she got the hot read. So it's mm-hmm. kind of it's kind mm-hmm. of a hot read, but it, it, a hot cold read. Yeah, it's it's in there. It's kind <laughs> of obvious, you know. It's yeah. like being in drug addiction yeah and that you have times where you're in and then you're trying to get Mm -hmm. out and you know that that's kind of the one thing that i do say though i guess there's a lot of people in the u.s that play hockey so having somebody in the audience that had lost a young person who played hockey i don't think of that as being a really broad 
thing in Canada, much more so because I think everybody's kids play hockey at some point. <laughs> well, and also she says right off, loved hockey. Yeah, loved hockey. Then he was good she at started it. Started saying he played hockey. Yeah. So oh, that's it was, true. It was played. Yeah, I do have that in my notes. She loved says originally hockey. loved and then played. That yeah. could even be a young child who didn't have a chance to to um, yeah get into hockey and play. Yeah, exactly. Okay, here's something I thought was very odd. Well, there's a couple things that were odd in this one that I want to ask your opinion of and anybody else in the chat. And I can't see any chat again. Other Oh, I got some. Okay, I can only see the last ones. Okay. She says, um, she spent a lot of time talking about this kid's personality. Good looking, everybody yeah. liked him, funny as heck, or whatever she mm -hmm. said. Yep. And then it was a lot of hope and promise I want to do in life kind of statements. So now this is coming from a person who's already dead. Mm -hmm. So why would they be communicating things they'd like to do in the future? I mean, I guess it's not according to some mediums, you can do whatever you want in the, right. over there. I, I understood that to mean that she was saying this is what he would have done if he hadn't died. Well, he said he wanted to go on and play hockey professionally. Correct. Yeah. Well, so does every kid. What, I mean, who's into a sport? Absolutely. That's what I say. It's like a, it's a, one of those Barnum statements. So it's, it's a, if they're playing hockey and they love playing hockey, yeah, it's a dream of every kid's for sure. Let me see. I'm going to refresh this chat. There, the other thing too that really caught me was she said, if they're playing hockey and they love playing hockey. Okay. Sorry. It is when I refresh it, it starts playing. Oh, it starts playing. Do you want me to read it? If you don't get it, yeah, go ahead and read them. Okay, so Janice says she sounds like an evangelical preacher. <laughs> she does. She does. I wonder if there's an influence of that. Yeah, I wonder. Because it's like she gets into a role like, okay, I'm going to sum this all up. And she she like goes into this mode like, yeah. and yeah. then yeah. I'm getting, and she closes her eyes and she's, she's, yeah. she's just a very like calm free. preacher. Yeah, she's just like free associates. Okay, yeah. well, I'm feeling all these things. And I think it's a really good assessment mm -hmm. from Janice. And Kat Mack uh, sort of agrees with what I was saying, which is so many young men would who have passed, especially in Canada, would fit this. And the exception being that she talked about the Red Wings, which is much more specific. And Lee uh, has noticed something that I think maybe both you and I missed. Maybe not. Maybe you've got it, Susan. He thinks it's hot reading, and because she keeps looking to her left, and is she reading the obit of the young man? It's an interesting idea. That's a good one, Lee. I might mm -hmm. be able to look into that. I think I'm trying to remember the name of this person if it's really common because we don't have the information that Thomas John has. He's got their he knows it's, who's and who's it, bought, who knows how the ticket mm -hmm. is. He's got the time to look him up. Um, and so, you won't have the information because it just said Beth G on her. Oh, yeah. I don't so think we, we wouldn't be I able would to know. find it. But but, you know, I don't you're think right. It was hot reading because wouldn't he have given more like um, the things that I thought were interesting? Well, the Red Wings was there. Mm -hmm. If you know it's Detroit then in hockey, then we like can figure it out. Yeah, I because he didn't say the name. And if she was hot reading a telltale of a person who's hot reading is usually to give not everything that's in the obituary, but just mm -hmm. a little here and there to spice it up. And because this is her last reading, and I would think that if Brandy was hot reading, she'd want to go out on a bang. So I right. would think she would have called in grandma by name or grandpa mm -hmm. by name or use this kid's name. Or um, so if she had the obituary in front of her, I think she would have used one or two more specific um and the thing that she said that made me go hmm that he died in a car accident and then she immediately assumed he was alive in the hospital on life support mm -hmm. i thought that was i don't know it's a bit of backtracking isn't it well how did she know that he was in the hospital is that a guess is that a good guess i think if it's a really good a guess car accident, you she... don't always die right away well no you don't but what yeah. I don't know what the chances would be. I guess if you live it would in be a good city to look like into. Detroit with, you know, you're not like out yeah. in the rural areas where mm -hmm. it takes a while to get an ambulance to you. Yeah. That maybe if he's in a car accident, the odds are higher that you're going to get to a hospital still at yeah. 
uh, it'd be interesting to know that because if if it is more likely that you end up in a hospital when you're in a car crash and then die later versus die instantly it would be really interesting to know that yeah we don't know what the what the chances because mm -hmm. you can't die instantly in a car crash too i mean it's like mm -hmm. an instant thing yep. and so if he's in the hospital I, I don't know i thought that was a reach but that would be something that wouldn't be an obituary it wouldn't have written no that you know he was in a car accident and he died and, but he he made it to the hospital and we so it's just there. another good guess another I think barnum so. yeah i think so it just sometimes you're going to throw things out they're going to hit well we've already seen her miss and then how smoothly she goes through with it just it, for example when she said it was a son no it's a nephew right oh, oh the nephew so feels close. like a right yeah it's so, so they could close. change yeah and there was no other siblings yeah that was another miss yeah left a sibling miss. behind nope oh, oh well and the younger man that was young part man of his life yeah somewhere anywhere yeah. please like yours so there, there were quite a few misses i mean all the, and most of the hits well the hits with the red wings and being in life support those are two interesting hits i think the life support one is not as good a hit as the Red Wing. I think that Detroit Red Wing one is. And you know, I'm thinking the opposite. Hit. I'm thinking. Ah. The Red, I'm thinking the Red Wings is as soon easier as explained. She's in Detroit, which is probably in the yeah. chat somewhere, and there, there's a hockey relationship. But that's where I'm thinking. That's like, oh well, that's obvious. But the, well, I'm going to look up. I'm going to try and find out if we could get those statistics. These researchers, these people. <laughs> My goodness. Um, but I, I had another thought what, of what she was speaking because, and I don't know, this is maybe my lack of understanding of this whole process, but she says that he's healthy in the spirit world. I wrote that down too. Did you? Mm -hmm. healthy. I'm it's healthy like, and whole. Yes. And can I'm you get sick in the organ. spirit world? I don't know. Can you get sick? I don't know. No, you can't get sick. <laughs> no. Yeah course not you can do whatever you want it's okay. life is perfect over there i like that yeah i noticed that too so i had them reach out to people like they're getting the readings because they want to know if they're okay and i think that means are you in hell oh i think okay. nobody ever says that yeah like, are you okay well of course if you're in the other world and you're yeah. able to communicate i guess you would be okay i mean how are you doing in I think they're just trying to say, okay, are you in hell? But they don't, they don't say it directly. Or purgatory or something. Right. Like tortured or whatever it is in hell with pointy people, people with pointy sticks or something. I, nobody ever says, I want to make sure he's not in hell because I guess that would be to their character. Like my, my, I always yeah. thought my brother wasn't a very good man. Yeah. I think he might be in hell or he wasn't religious and he didn't accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal savior before he died. And, um, yeah, healthy and whole does seem odd because it just seems odd to say, I'm healthy, I'm whole. No, you're not. You're not with your family, except you're with grandpa. And that's the other thing. The woman on the screen, Brent Beth, is probably, I don't remember what she looks like. You've, you've looked at her face yeah. recently. Was she in her 40s or later? It's so hard to tell. She could be 40s, 50s, for sure. I don't think 60s, 70s, no. Okay, so yeah. how likely is it that her, that this kid, her nephew's grandfather would be dead, which would mean that it would be that woman's parent or yeah. the other parent? Because she says yeah. grandfather, she doesn't give a name to a grandparent. Yeah, I noted so, that as well. So I think it's good odds that one of them is reach. dead. Okay. Right? She, because then, then they would be like 80s, 90s, right? yeah okay so if the woman on the screen is 40 then yeah her, she'd be her, in her higher 60. 40s though yeah okay let's say she's 50 okay how likely is it that a woman in her 50s would have her living parents pretty good mm -hmm. so that was really that was a good hit that she says mm -hmm. a grandfather mm -hmm. but i think again it's just a guess it's just like something mm -hmm. you're saying because if grandfather had not bit she would just said um great grandfather or grandfather like right yeah um and yeah she would have just changed it. to yeah. this nephew yeah. two grandfathers yeah so the odds were one of them is probably passed mm -hmm. and granny would have just seized on it 
So I thought that was interesting. Um, the thing that bothers me uh, on top of everything else is the harm, as you like to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I find, because these mediums say they're giving hope, they're helping them heal, they're helping them whatever they're doing. I don't feel like they're helping him move on. Mm -hmm. And here's the example. Bear with me for a second. Mm -hmm. Is this woman, Brandy, is saying there's a picture of him on the on the wall in a frame and his mother, unnamed, unnamed mother, mm -hmm. walks by and sometimes she talks to the picture. Okay, that's quite normal. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's normal. Yep. And uh, that may even go on for decades where mm -hmm. you look at the picture and you'll say, oh, I remember you. I've got, like I say, I've got my mom's photo right here. And you know, sometimes mm -hmm. I talk to her. I know she's not listening. And mm -hmm. I, it's just, it's just because I'm weird. And I think it's very typical, but yep. what Brandy says is that when you are talking, when the mother is talking to the picture, then I'm there with you in spirit. I'm mm -hmm. there and I can hear you. And I find that really manipulative mm -hmm. to the mother that mm -hmm. she, if I thought I had a portal to a dead child, especially yeah. a child. And that there was this picture on the wall that was a portal. I don't know if I would move in space around the house without having that picture with me. Like right. I would carry yep. it with me. I would put yep. it in the car with me. I would talk to it all the time. I don't think that it's, it feels like it's not healthy to, to perpetuate this feeling that you have this. And I think of it as a portal. Mm -hmm. But it's a one-way conversation, but she knows because the medium told her the, the, the sun is there. Mm -hmm. I am there with you spiritually. I would put it in my bed at night. I would, mm -hmm. I would carry it with me throughout the day I do, and night. I, I just feels like. And you'd be devastated innocence. if something happened to it. Oh yeah. What happens to yeah. the picture? I would have multiple, I'd have pictures made of him and put them in all the rooms of the house. So I wouldn't have to carry him around with me. <laughs> And but, the idea that a picture is a portal. I mean, we're, yeah. it's like that Disney film Coco, which I absolutely mm. adored. It was a great show. Uh, but it freaked me out through the whole thing. If you guys haven't seen Coco, I'm going to spoil it for you. The pictures are put up on the Dia de los Muertos, which is November 1st. And um, that's the family tells stories about their about their dead family members. That's wonderful. But they connect to them because there's a photo on an altar. But yet, that is the only photo because this is taking place in some fictional mm -hmm. time whenever people didn't have a lot of photographs and like they had a photograph and the idea that if the photograph gets damaged and in the story of Coco the pictures are often like like I'm gonna rip it up you know no it's not to kill off grandpa finally forever and that idea that the picture is going to get lost mm -hmm. and that is the only and then they go and they put the picture up on the altar when in the end and that's the only picture what if something happens like it's a mm -hmm. pond or the dog eats it or whatever mm -hmm. Scary so same idea me. yeah same idea i would have a thousand pictures made of that and put them yep. all over the world so that nothing would happen to them but that's the idea is that um you'd have them engraved or something so it'd be on gold or i don't know but this thought of how how is the mother going to receive this information whenever the dot when her sister beth tells her um, I had this reading with a medium. She was really amazing. And Johnny came through. Um, he he is still a fan of the Red Wings. Well, tell us how they're going to do. Maybe we could bet on bet it. On it. Money <laughs> off of it. Um, and he came through and he said he had a lot of hope for his future, but none of that's going to happen because I'm dead now. And it's cool that people donated, you donated my organs. <laughs> Because, but I don't going to talk about it and I'm not going to mention what organs they were or where they went and who got them and how they're mm -hmm. doing with them. Are they maybe rival fans of the Red Wings? <laughs> that might be bad. <laughs> so here's, and, and, oh, he, and he knows you held her hand. I'm, yeah. except, I'm thinking of this fictional conversation Beth is having. No, probably not fictional. This conversation she's having with her sister and that um, he's sorry that of the car accident you couldn't have done anything about it mm -hmm. yeah right 
moms that are thinking of the same. Tell mom not to feel guilty. Yeah, don't feel guilty. Yeah. Um, and oh, you know the picture you have of him in the foyer whenever you walk in the house. Well, every time you talk to that picture, he hears you, and that he's there with you in spirit. Mm -hmm. So continually talk to. The, I mean, I just get a nice, comfortable chair and just sit there and say, "So, let me tell you." <laughs> Because I, I think that would be there. Mm -hmm. And oh, and grandpa's taking care of me and showing me around. I find that odd. What is, why would you need to have anybody show you around heaven or whatever it is? And he's healthy and whole, even though he is missing his heart and his kidneys. <laughs> I guess they grew. The whole thing is just so weird. And <laughs> why, why, why do people. Yeah. I guess I'm getting hungry and tired. It's too. It's yeah, we got through them all. Yeah. And I'm low on energy. I haven't eaten anything and I've had too much. And Kat did over. make a comment and he says he didn't have to be on life support for long, but young, healthy men are prime candidates for organ donation. So that's true. So, so, so what is Kat saying is that they would have taken him from the site where he was. Yeah. Just and I, nearly dead kind of like, yeah. you know. Yeah, they know he's going to die, and they're like, "Let's yeah. get him to the hospital, put him on life support, so yeah. we can get donations from him." Yeah, and and also it's a logical leap once it was affirmed that he was in the hospital on life support. It's an easy jump to say there was a talk. I mean, she didn't say there were organ donations. She said there was talk about organ don donations. Well, she guarantee they were. They're in Michigan, of course they are. They've got hospitals and stuff like that. Again, yeah. it's not a. a but she's well, searching first, right? Or something. She's mm -hmm. searching by saying talk of organ donation. And then when she says yes, then he donated the organ. You know, then she could go the next. But if she'd said no, there was no talk of that, they wouldn't have gone on any further, right? She wouldn't have said anything about organ, organ donation. So it's like she feels them out well, in the in conversation. Countries, they don't do organ donations. It's like a like, I mean, it's getting more common. I think, isn't it in, in the Jewish religions, they believe that you have so, some sex some parts of jewish judaism believe that mm -hmm. you must be whole yeah so they don't yeah. do donations and it's yeah i think they're trying to change that right some rabbis to kind of change it because they need donations in these different mm -hmm. um, areas but so if if it was in israel or someplace like that maybe she wouldn't have raised right the, yeah the discussion of um but there's some fa donations. families that just don't like the idea of it right as well they just don't want that to happen so right. she was searching she was searching to feel whether or not this family went that route and they it's did and so she is definitely going to have that conversation if absolutely somebody there who's got body parts yeah, yeah, yeah. and and i'm yeah. sure they're very skilled at how they how they approach it yeah yeah and yeah and so in north are... america it's probably a done deal right it's th that conversation will be had oh i'm, I'm probably sure right yeah so he was in detroit somehow she knew it and it's likely it was just mentioned in the chat. Yeah, maybe. Okay, it's so so interesting. All the way through. Now let's sum this all. Let's sum this puppy up. Three and a half hours <laughs> later, four hours. What? Oh my goodness! To get through one hour, the prep work. You did a ton of prep work. I did prep. We work we both one. did, and we didn't do the same prep work, which was amazing. Uh, it's I like, like we're psychic. Ooh, we're not psychic. <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> but getting through it, and these people have on facebook have been with us for hours thank i you know it's amazing thank you you guys if you're still I really there i appreciate it i'll have yeah. to i'll have to find some more i've got thousands of readings to do it's certainly interesting to, maybe people will listen to them with me they're not this long i don't usually go for an hour but it it the summit made it possible for us like i said these are unknown psychics mm -hmm. to watch them their mind you know they give their little spiel at the beginning and then to watch them do the readings one after another and to get the feel for how they how they work yeah it's really interesting the mediumship so okay let me ask you two questions three questions hopefully i can answer them oh no no they're your opinion okay it's not like what's the capital of qatar oh qatar yeah or oh. cutter or whatever it is not not that question <laughs> what is the unladen <laughs> unladen speed of a Carrying swallow a, a swallow carrying a coconut coconut yeah no 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 not those kind of questions or what's your favorite color but this is like um 
Okay. Brandy, we've kind of alluded to this. Do you think she thinks she's psychic? Oh, I was going to ask you that question. Um, I get to ask it first. <laughs> or because because in Mark Edwards' world, he thinks most psychics know they're faking. I can't imagine that she would be a true believer be, from my perspective because it just seems so far-fetched and easily explained. However, I have a sense that it's that they have these intuitions, right? That they confirmation bias keeps building and they think they have some bit of a gift but maybe they just have to ramp it up a little bit with doing some other things like looking at the chat and see, finding out somebody's from Detroit because that's a little bit of cheating right you have to know you're cheating well she might not realize that she had cheated yeah do you think it's she just might have seen the word Detroit and just put it two and two together and she thought <laughs> Because that, that to me though, when Susie put that two to two together and you use it in your reading, that's cheating, right? It's, it, I mean, if she read it earlier and she forgot about it, but how do we test that, right? How can we know that she forgot about it and then just pulled it out later because well, it was in her we memory? We could see the chat. We would know if it was in there. Yeah, and then we could exactly. Say, well, she was there, so she probably saw the chat. She's looking at the chat. So then, then she's cheating, and she has to know that she's cheating, and she's amplifying her gifts. So maybe she's a true believer that just needs a boost. I don't know what it is, but in my husband, he's pretty black and white. He would say that she's a con. There's no she way she couldn't she's know. A con. Yeah, that she would know she's a con. And I have trouble going the full distance to say that she's a con, but there's a part of me when she's, I mean, with the Arcturian stuff, like it just, I, it's, a, that's the Arcturian healing part is the part that really gets me. I'm like, why that? Like, how did she get there? I would love to hear her story about how she got into the Arcturian hearing, healing Arcturian healing that's hard to say <laughs> because that that's the part that really blows my mind because the Reiki fair enough or the Reiki however you say it that's all over the place so I can see how you can fall down that rabbit hole but how did you find this really obscure one that most people haven't heard of you know that those are some questions that I have about her Maybe she's just trying to find something unique that will set her apart from the other con people or other yeah. psychics, whatever you want to call them. And I know some people think that most psychics believe that they have this ability. I don't know. I really don't know. It'd be really interesting that I don't have an answer for really. That's my thoughts. Okay. So I'll give How's you mine. Uh, we'll yeah. see if anybody else um, wants to chime in and tell us what they think. I think she truly believes. That mm -hmm. she is helping people and that she um is is in touch with spirit whatever however she defines it the the weird stuff that she's gotten into i think is just so lazy that mm -hmm. she's gotten into this reincarnated stuff yeah. i don't know how she got into it that would be interesting she doesn't seem like somebody would necessarily would have been i mean she seems smart it. intelligent she's well-spoken Articulate. Right. charismatic articulate yeah right. but i How think she really thinks she's psychic and <laughs> i think and i'm i'm the summit has really helped me to to have change my mind a little bit about some of this so many of these mediums are female mm -hmm. so many of these mediums are stay-at-home moms normally they're mm -hmm. raising their children they're uh, they're um at a point now her kids are a little bit older where they're you know, they're all potty trained and all that, and they're in school. So she's finding herself with a little more time. She probably would like to make some extra income. Mm -hmm. And um, she went back and got her degree, which is fabulous. But I have a feeling that in some of these women's world, she's in North Carolina, I think. I can't remember where I think she's at. Texas? No, she's Texan. Yeah, she's okay. Texas. So she's probably... You know, some people get into Tupperware, some people get into scrapbooking, some people get into 
um, skepticism. Mm -hmm. Skepticism. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a feeling no that money this in that woman, one. there's no money in it. You guys. Don't even try to get into skepticism as a, as a profession. I nope. got no profession here, but I have a feeling that maybe this is just her way of connecting to other people, reaching out and helping. Remember her kids are all homeschooled and she's kind of done with them. I think they're all in their teenage years. Maybe they're at the point where they're uh, supplementing with some kind of school school. So she has more time on her hands, possibly she's in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. She's not making connections with people uh, necessarily in person. I think, I think she, I think she fully believes she's, and she's misinterpreting. Yeah. I think he's just lazy. She's just been lazy as far as her research. Mm -hmm. And just because it's written and it says that she thinks it must be real. And then she's, she's finding her mentors. Yeah. And she's finding her own stories to kind of try and yeah. fit. The, and she some of them were great. To a mentor that talked her into this. Yeah. Arcturian. Yeah. What is it called again? Arcturian healing. Right. Okay. So, all right. So that, did anybody say anything in the chat, what they thought? Yeah, there's a couple. So uh, Janice says, mostly cold reading, talking fast, throwing out platitudes and seeing what sticks. And then Lee says it was either that or, or weed eating. <laughs> what? <laughs> did you say weed or read? Weed, W-E-E-D. Oh, <laughs> perspective. Uh, I think that she is one that hasn't been really intros introspective about her own readings and that she uses feel. I feel, I'm just telling you what I feel, man. Yeah. And I don't think she sees that she's using Barnum statements, mm -hmm. that she's um, offering platitudes. And I think she gets so much feedback she's a very uh, charismatic kind of personality. I'm sure people really do well and give her lots of feedback and say, oh, that really helped. Mm -hmm. You were 100% right. I think she's getting all that kind of feedback. And so that's why she thinks she's psychic. And all she's seeing is she's saying what she feels. I don't think she's lying. I think she feels these things. And I, Janice made a statement the other day on one of the videos that these people in their mind, it's like they're coming up with a story. Mm -hmm. and. And you kind of get that whenever she's off to the side and she's thinking, it's like she's coming up with a scenario or Janice would say like a timeline, not a timeline, but like a, like somebody's been said, okay, you need to write a, a short story. Here's the short story. It's got to be about a boy who dies in a car accident, who's mm -hmm. into hockey. And he's very personable. Go. So, and then, and, and then she's like, okay, here's my, I am seeing. Yeah, and they have diff difficulty separating what their own mind is creating with what they feel is from spirits. That's a good way of saying it. I think yeah. that's how it is. And because she's getting so much feedback from the people, the other mm -hmm. women around her are validating her, her feelings yeah. that she has, she's convinced herself that it's actually psychic. And that's, that's exactly what I think is happening with almost mm -hmm. all of these women. Makes sense. Mediums is especially because they're new. Mm -hmm. uh, once you get into the hot reading stuff later in life, you got to know you're cheating. You got to know. It's okay. cheating. Yeah. Okay. So my second question is. Before you go into your second question, sure. Kat says that Adrian's Claire Essence says that this woman isn't psychic, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. Yeah, Kat. And then Janice says, I think maybe she thinks it's worth a little cheat here and there to justify helping, which is kind of what I was saying about the. Detroit to justify thing. the means yeah and and to justify helping someone with her intuitive abilities yeah so those little cheats that are but she right. probably uh, validates it for sure okay what's your second question even though I don't think she was hot reading no but, but I think a lot of mediums just do the, that. the Detroit red room I'm having a low thing. day I, they need so much for me Mark tells a story of a guy who was uh hot reading um and and uh cheating and he got caught and he said to his audience, he said, look, you guys make me do this. You made me, I have to be on task. I have to be, I can't, you know, so it's your fault if I'm cheating because I have to cheat. Sometimes I have Ooh. a little moment and it's true. Yeah. If, who wants to go to a, a medium or a seance or whatever, and you're sitting there and you're like, well, nothing's happening. I'm just not feeling it today. All I'm thinking about is my stomach's grumbling or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and you're, 
you're going to have to give all that money back, all that mm-hmm. wonderful cash, because I just can't, I can't do it. It's just not working. Of course, you're going to have to make up something or cheat or something because it's expected of you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. Going to the next question. Yeah. The sitters. Mm. Now, I told you what Sam thought. Yeah. But what do you think these sitters think? Do they feel, because I think they're saying they go home and they make up the story and they it, misremember it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And do you think that they thought they got something out of it? Because Beth, that was her nephew. Nothing mm-hmm. else came through. I mean, grandfather was there. Doesn't mean it was her grandfather, her father, but, and the first person was, Um, the woman who's Cindy. Who's, oh, Cindy and Cindy, then Beth. Yeah, it was I Beth. Actually read her name. Cindy, her husband came Cindy through and just died. Yeah. Uh, I've seen Cindy several times on the screen and she just seems so, she feels so educated and so. She's a good speaker. Yeah, very yeah, clear. But, yeah. But, uh, you can tell that the grief is recent. Like yeah, she says yeah. with her husband. And I think that it's there. Um, and she's getting animal sightings anyway. Mm-hmm. I can't even, I can't even. Um, so what's your question about them? What do the, what do the sitters think? Did they, well, do they think they felt like they got a good- I think that the last one, Beth really did feel that she got an amazing reading. That's the sister. sense. Yeah. yeah. Or her sister-in-law. Is it her sister? Yeah. Yeah. She never said. Yeah. Because there's no right. It could be either hmm because she was quite emotional and I think when first of all there's that nervousness that you're going to be talking to this person you know when almost crying too yeah there's that part of it that oh you're getting to be included and and then there's the excitement then there's the sadness the grief that she's experiencing as this yeah. is going on I think unless she replayed it back a lot I don't think she would ever think it was a bad reading. I think she feels that she got something out of it and would be very excited to, to share it with her sister or sister-in-law, as you say, they didn't say. So I think she got, she thought she got a good reading. Uh, Samantha, there were quite, a, it was a stretch. I mean, it wasn't Samantha's loved one. It was her mom's. Correct. Somebody who lived, her mom took in for a period of time. But as we talked, apparently she thought it was decent at the time. Again, there's that excitement. Oh, I get to talk to this celebrity or whatever you want to call her, this person who is considered an expert. And there's that nervousness and there's the excitement and all that thing. So I think all three of them will have had that, you know, that nervousness, excitement, et cetera. So I'm guessing that in the moment, they probably thought it was pretty awesome and they were excited. And it's interesting that Samantha afterwards thought, yeah, that wasn't so good. Good for her, right? Good for her to figure that out. Yeah, yeah, she's come. She's she's great. She's very, she's very, she'll tell me what she thinks. And I I really appreciate that about it. Okay, so I have two more questions. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. What do you think Brandy would say if she stumbled across this video and is watching it on YouTube later on my channel? Hi, Brandy. What do you think she would say, you know, maybe she's going to get a tag. She's going to find it. It's going to be recommended to her. How do you feel that she thinks that we covered her? Were we fair? Were we open? Were we? I'm trying to be fair. I mean, I think that she probably wouldn't like the points where we're laughing at things, but sometimes it's, it's hard not to. Um, I think that would be difficult for somebody to listen to who is, a believer, right? I mean, that would be difficult. I I hope that she would hear some of the nice things that we said, because we certainly said lots of nice things about her as well. But she probably would focus in like most of us do on the, the negative aspects. And she would probably be able to rationalize most of them away. I'm guessing if There's she's a true believer still. Other readings. Yeah, if other. she's still, if she's still down that rabbit hole, she's going to be able to justify a lot of the stuff that we've picked out and i think that it would be great to have a conversation with her it'd be i'd be really interested to learn about her psychology courses for example 
Oh, I, I'm fascinated with what that was like. I think yeah. she wouldn't be happy about uh, the things you said about her UFO beliefs mm -hmm. and all that, that crazy stuff, because that is crazy. The stuff. Arcturian. Brandy, that's freaking crazy. Baby, <laughs> don't go there. I mean, come on. Talking to the dead and aliens mm -hmm. from star children or whatever they, give me a break your kids are going to say i think that mom is yeah and i don't think she'd like that i would say that her kids probably right don't yeah. think highly of your um prowl your your intelligent level what you've fallen into i think your kids are, are would be embarrassed by it but and i and she's going to probably say oh no they're not they mm -hmm. love that they you know of course and they might they... It too. my daughter's thinking of doing it too and i'm mm -hmm. going to go be. into this for a living i think she's gonna you know i could totally be misreading it but, mm -hmm. but looking at it like from the side i feel like this woman it sounds like some QAnon person with a flat earth and and people in the pizza restaurant under the i mean it's just that nuts what, yeah. what these people are talking about it's yeah. just right on that level so if you can see that is crazy stuff crazy talk that's exactly where it sounds like you're talking to mm -hmm. it's just come on okay the last question oh in in refresh and see if anybody else had anything to say on that okay um, you... nothing's coming up yet okay oh so, hold on i lied uh depends lied. on this it's cat cat yeah another one it came up really slowly so cat says depends on the sitter i think what their motivation for going was so this is going back to the question you had before about the sitters she said uh cat said she had her tea leaves read once on a date ooh and thought it was a hoot i listened to the recording of that every few years and still laugh at how wrong it all was <laughs> that sounds great give it time cat it could still come through, come through. <laughs> All those things could still happen. Um, okay, so my last question mm -hmm. is, what do you think, and you've watched some of these videos, so if you want to pull them out of your mind, what do you think the sitters think of us analyzing these mm. videos it is critical? And I know they, I know that in, the people who are watching the videos are people who are, who are that are believers, are people who are starting to question. I'm, I'm getting that from the from the comments they leave. They're, they've had a bad reading or they've had, um, I don't know, something's happened in their life where they're like, you know, I'm not so sure about right. that anymore. And then this comes up in their feed. I doubt they're going to watch a four hour video, but it comes up in their, well, I don't know, maybe, you never maybe know. people do. <laughs> it comes up in their feed and they say, um, yeah this maybe this does resonate and i don't think people relate well to me which is part of the reason why i have to have you and janice on <laughs> because you guys are so much nicer than i am i don't think people that are believers necessarily think of me well because i'm an outspoken i'm an atheist which is like mm -hmm. satanist in their world uh some of them <laughs> um others tell me they're like i don't care I've had believers tell me, oh, so yeah, Thomas John calls you an atheist all the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't really care. I know lots of atheists. Awesome. Bring up, that would not have been a thing. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. No, no, we don't have atheists around. There's two in the world or something. <laughs> but <laughs> now it's a lot more common. Yeah. But I don't, I'm wondering what they think of this whole idea that I'm going into such depth, analyzing these readings what do you what do you think of this phenomenon i get people tell me don't you have a life susan <laughs> obviously not yeah you don't have enough on your plate you're not I doing enough apparently doing neither am i apparently but they say get a life mm -hmm. which i think is a lousy excuse because you're telling me mm -hmm. what to do so well, i i don't hoping... tell you what to do you don't tell me what to do come on man let's go outside <laughs> Come on, lady. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, watch out for Susan Gerbeck. <laughs> Forced to be reckoned with. relate well to me. I think they think I'm arrogant and jealous. I'm jealous. Okay. Oh, you're jealous. Well, I oh, think I get that, that all the time. That's a, that's mind reading for one thing. 
and uh, oh, yeah. ass assumptions. I don't I don't like it when people are judgmental like that. Mm -hmm. So I so find it. What do you think is a hold that these people are thinking when they see these? Well, I'm hoping that they see two women because this it is women who get these readings by and large. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that seeing two women will at least get them to start watching. They may not be ready to watch and they may feel really uncomfortable with what we're saying. So they may not watch it and they may lash out. You've had some of that, right? But they, you feel they haven't even watched the videos, right? When they lash out. Most of the time they're not. No. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully if they watch it, actually do watch it, they will get something out of it and it will put a little, I don't know, a little, oops, hit my microphone, just a little seed into the brain that might grow into something eventually that they will start looking for more and more things. And hopefully having a couple of women, you know, Janice, me, you, I don't know if you've had any others, but women is good. They're good. I think it's a good idea to have women talking about this. Cause I think you've said that there's men doing this, but not women on YouTube that you could find. No, no I haven't seen any women. So I'm hoping that helps, but I'm sure that if there's still true believers and they're going to get their hackles up, right. They're, they're not going to be happy with us. But hopefully they'll. I think they know that there are some mediums out there that are not legit. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people are willing to say, yeah, they're not all legit. Yeah. Mine is, but <laughs> not all. So let me watch this <laughs> video of this person and let me mm -hmm. see. Because I don't know this woman. I don't know Brandy Khan. They could say, mm -hmm. I'm going to watch this and not feel the person not attacked yeah they'll mm -hmm. say oh i see how she's doing that yeah, yeah you're probably right but she then when they go to their own psychic maybe they'll start seeing that they're, they're doing the same strategies yeah mm -hmm. once once you start putting that seed in their brain then they, exactly hey i'm telling you guys you better hang up right now you better stop watching this video because if you you're you, i'm going to change your mind you're going to start questioning and that's <laughs> um and it's trust me, Susan is not an arrogant, nasty person. No, I'm not at all. I'm, no, yeah, I, no, I, I, well, it depends. Um, it, <laughs> She's it, straightforward. I'd say that. Mark says, Mark has said to me, I can't believe you're going on for so long in these videos. Who's going to watch them? And I put him up and Janice and I, the first one we did was five and a half hours and people are watching it and they're, they're leaving comments and the comments are leaving show that they made Watch it through. It. Yeah. And the same one with the one I did with Janice, it was almost four hours. Right. They're going and they're they're obviously <laughs> listening to it and they're leaving me comments that show that they finished it. But um, you know, my kids watch videos on YouTube yeah. and I do too. And sometimes they're watching videos of people playing games. Yeah. Oh my God. For hours. It's a thing. Yeah. Six Absolutely hours. it's a thing. Yeah. They're playing like Mario Brothers to level 150 how do you they obviously don't have enough to do get out get out there and go out into nature and go see some spirit animals <laughs> i think they put it on in the background it's just people talking and they just i like i watch some of these long videos i'll put them on maybe not five yeah. hours but i'll put them on and they're just you run them and then maybe a day later doing the dishes or you making more. something yeah it feels like you're you have a con connection with somebody out Correct. there yeah that is watching especially during the pandemic when we weren't really going anywhere yeah but so i don't care if a video takes me five hours i'm learning something and i feel like i'm learning from you and from the people who are making chat because you guys all hear stuff i did a little differently yeah i yeah. you know i wrote this book about yes. uh, the grief vampire world and it is written it's been revised a couple times and now um I was told, Ben told me that I need to put more personality into it. I need to, I need to focus more. I'm like, oh God, I don't want to revise this again and again. I mean, we're not even gotten to the spelling grammar and the run on sentence and all that, which is a nightmare <laughs> in itself, but I could hire somebody to do that. That's right. Yeah. But this other idea that I have to have more, he wants me to have more, what is it? Susan, what is yeah. it? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. I hate doing this over and over, revising, revising, revising. So I've kind of put it on hold a little bit. It's right. sitting You've there. Enough, got yeah. Multiple copies on saved in multiple places. I can come back to it. But as I'm doing more of these readings with people, I mean, not readings, watching these readings, I'm 
I feel like I'm changing my mind a little bit. I started out thinking they were all kind of con people and they right. them while they're yeah. con people. I'm getting more as I'm learning more about these individual women who are doing these readings. I'm starting to feel like there's those people out there that are Thomas John mm-hmm. who damn well they're cheating. Mm-hmm. And then you got these other people who I feel like they've come into it like Amway or something. Yeah. <laughs> they don't quite know. They're kind of willing to overlook it a little bit. Yeah. Well, I know Richard Saunders has said to me a few times that he feels that, and I don't know what he's basing this on. This is just casual conversation that most are true believers. And then there's the con con people as yeah. well. Right. There's so I think he, that would be in line them. with what you're saying. And I have to say this, Janice has a lovely comment. Oh, does she's, Janice? She's yeah. a lovely person. She, oh, she's amazing. And I love her artwork. So a little plot, go check out her artwork. Mine's right and, there. There, exactly. Well, if I had my glasses on, I'd be able to see it. But I, guess, <laughs> you know, I took my glasses off. Uh, yeah, she says, I'd listen to you two any day of the week. Aww. Isn't it nice? It's like, hey, oh. guess what, Janice? It's going to be on YouTube. You could just sit there and play it <laughs> on over loop. and over again. <laughs> on loop maybe we'll say something different the next time you hear it <laughs> you'll hear something different at least i'm going to continue doing these even though they're they are draining um i'm going to write an article about this you guys about the whole summit and it's going to go up on um skeptical inquire it'll probably be out in mid july i've already started writing the article but it, i had to get all the way through all the readings mm. where i could see because as as we said, some of these readings are connected to each other, especially mm-hmm. Thomas John. Totally. You got to check out the video I just put up. It's only like 20 minutes long, 30 minutes long. Yeah, I think, I think I saw about 38 minutes or something. It's very Not short. four hours. <laughs> no, it's, it's short and it really sums up exactly what's going on with him and how different he is from these poor, poor people. These women, I, don't know. Yeah. I guess we should go because my stomach is growling. And yeah, I gotta go eat too. Food. The dog's needs to go out probably. So she's still, she's you, still she hasn't moved. This. Thank you, Jewel, for sitting there like a good puppy. She's been a very good dog. Very That's good dog. Very good dog. A good dog. Who's a good dog? Who's a good dog? <laughs> you can't hear me because no. you got your headphones on. Let's yeah, I have to walk, go. Jewel. Come on, let's go. <laughs> um, thank you guys for staying with us. Um, I really appreciate it. Any last anything else that I should say before I exit and then I see the chat uh, for those of you yeah. on YouTube please subscribe please enjoy please leave your comments anything oh just uh, Janice laughing at us saying that you can uh, play this video on loop and listen to us all the time <laughs> I'm sure there's ways of putting it on loop so you can hear it over over. <laughs> just run the whole channel there you go talk all day long so yeah give these other videos a look they're going to be on the playlist called uh, mediumship summit 2021 i think it's 2021 medium medium summit or mediumship summit it's a playlist on my channel psychics like ex- explained i'm going to i'm trying really hard to hit a thousand views because once i hit a thousand views i can start making money and i will make enough to probably buy a couple boxes of milk duds a year so <laughs> it's really not any money from what i understand nobody will tell you how much money you make but i think it's like ten dollars a month or something like that but i still i'm a goal oriented person and i like goals and my goal is to hit a thousand once i hit a thousand i'll need to make more than that but i want to try and see if i can hit a thousand we're at 703 i think now so that's good nice yeah i'm going i'm moving fast way faster than these other (laughs) mediums believe it or not okay Thank you again. Thank you, everybody, for staying. I it was appreciate very fun. It. Um, I'll, in a few hours after I've eaten, I will have this up on YouTube. I have to edit some little bits here and there, but it, for the most part, it'll be as you see it on Facebook. Sounds good. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Susan. Bye-bye, everyone.